Woo! You guys ready? Nope. No. Do you guys drink coffee in the mornings? No. No. Never been a coffee drinker? Nope. I only like the smell of it. Okay. I like the smell of it. I don't. I just, I, I can't stand the smell. I like coffee. I drink it in the morning. I'll have a cup. Or, you know, sometimes two, but not very. I don't usually drink very much. I know people drink like a whole pot of coffee. Like, dude. Granny does that. You, got, you know how much heartburn I'd have? Nothing. Yeah. Like, how do you not shake through the day? Like, no doubt. I had two cups of coffee the other day because I was really, really tired. And I think I was talking a mile a minute, like, for two hours. Yeah. And then I was like crashing. An hour That's what it does. Yeah. They so say, they say, and pop doesn't do anything for me. No, pop don't. So they say that the way that coffee works is the caffeine in it doesn't it actually, it causes you to, yeah. <laughs> I got a shit. But like it causes you to crash if you don't, if you don't let yourself actually wake up before you drink it. So like they say to wait like anywhere from like 60 to 90 minutes before you actually drink coffee. Not really. After waking up because I guess it does something in your body where it like after, a short amount of time after drinking coffee, it will cause you to crash. Hmm. But if you drink it after you wake up a little bit, it causes I just thought it was you because to, I it gives you more energy through. I the thought day. it was just because I don't drink it very often. I don't know I how just, true that is. I just heard on Joe Rogan, and sometimes some people on there are bullshitters. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't drink it very often, so I thought that was the problem. Maybe. I only drink it when I'm really tired. Like, I need to wake up, and usually I only have one cup, like, just a cup. I only drink, like, a cup or two. I don't drink a lot of coffee. Like, that's why, like, if we I had If I do a, drink it, I drink it black. We had though. a Keurig, and we got rid of that oh. shit. That shit's expensive. Keurigs are? They're expensive. Like, the Keurig itself is cheap, but, I mean, like, the well, pods, those are buy, expensive. If you buy regular coffee and then buy one of those reusable cups, yeah. it's not so bad. Yeah, but then it, it's not very strong. I like strong coffee. I like uh, the, I don't know. We, the we dark have roast. one, and... Uh, Jeremiah, he used to drink a lot of coffee, but not so much anymore. He uses one of those K cups, like the reusable K cup. We just got a French press. I got rid of all that shit. French presses are nice. Yeah, oh. it's, you save a lot of money on coffee. You don't have a big machine sitting there. Yeah, you you just, just and we got a water dispenser, so like we have hot water. Mm -hmm. I just use that water dispenser, man. Purified, clean water. Yeah, Boom. it's just easy. Use it when you need it. Mm -hmm. Yep, Done. getting all fancy. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's all fancy. <laughs> that that pr French press costs fifteen dollars. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> compared to your like Keurigs and shit, they're like sixty to a hundred. I'm good. But it makes you look fancy. That's the uh -huh. important part. I always thought that Keurigs were fancy until everybody owned them. Mm -mm. Yeah. About five ten years ago, you're like, man, you got a Keurig? That's awesome. And now everybody's got one. It's like you got a Keurig. You're rich because those I fucking K cups are expensive. Though, like when everybody started getting them, I'm like, why? You can only have one yeah. cup. Like, yeah, them things the aren't good for but one the cup. And better? they're like, and you get like 13 of those cups in a thing. And it's like 13. dollars It's like holy shit. Like I'd rather, I could buy a bag of coffee At for like point, eight it's bucks. Cheaper to go to Starbucks. And it's eight dollars. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I buy is a Starbucks coffee in the bag, mm -hmm. and it's like eight dollars for a bag. That should have last me two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. At least two weeks, if not longer. No, I've tried with I've me tried drinking probably only shit, two weeks. Like the only thing I take. So you need candy coffee. Yeah, pretty much. I can't just regular coffee. I can't stand. Coffee. I can drink it. it I got. I can drink an, adult. Coffee. It depends just, on. It depends on my mood. Like I'll drink it plain. I'll drink it with a, like a little teaspoon of sugar. Sometimes I drink it with creamer. You give me that child coffee. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Most people are like they got to have their coffee a certain way. I'm like. I don't care. Yeah, that's how I like. I usually <laughs> coffee's if I, coffee. If I, get I coffee, like the mocha lattes. I like all that shit. I don't. I like cold coffee. I like hot coffee. I don't like the chocolate coffee. Like the oh, coffee. I love the yeah. chocolate. I hate chocolate. chocolate I, can do though. Car car I don't like chocolate. I love the mochas. I, like the mochas. I, don't, I don't like chocolate. Like mochas, yeah. That's do. the problem. Is I don't like chocolate. So. I don't mind the caramel. I don't like vanilla. I don't like much vanilla anything. Mm -mm. I like vanilla and I like caramel, but I don't like chocolate. So anything with chocolate and that goes for anything, not just coffee. I don't know. Like you don't like chocolate? I don't like chocolate. Did I just ate plain chocolate earlier? Like Hershey bars make me yeah. throw up. I love Hershey bars. I had a Hershey bar earlier. Favorite chocolate bar. I, li I do like Snickers. It's America's like, favorite I like chocolate bar. Like I like chocolate um, with... Ruth. That's, that's not a chocolate like, bar. That's just a like, candy bar. Like, it's, yeah, it's like, bar yeah. With nuts in it and yeah. caramel. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I like Caddyshack. that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should nutty. name a. They should name a candy after that. Like they should call it a candy shack and then just put a bunch of different stuff in. Caddy shack. Candy. She's saying like. A I think we're words. getting too far into this. Anyway, we are the no, bonsai wait, tell me that. Wow. We're 
Wait, five minutes I thought this in, was a mic check. Huh? I thought this was a mic check. No, this is the this is the podcast. I mean, we don't usually do a mic check for five minutes. Mi- yeah. Oh, well, I thought start, you guys just but... got distracted. Well, we do that too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we are the Bonsai Movie Crew. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff down there. Uh, don't forget to rate us and all that good jazzy shit. Um, what's the first thing I do? Oh yeah, creator profile. It's, it's right up there. Yeah, it's right there. I got it. Man, hey. Starting this in all five minutes. <laughs> wow. Wow. We wow. do it every week, and I still don't know. And you have uh, points up there. Yeah, it's even right here on my screen, too, and I still don't pay it any attention. So you have two places for it. Yeah. I always ask myself before I look. It's one of those things like you yell at your kids for. You know what I mean? Like, they'll ask you a dumbass question. It's like, it's, it's right in front of your face. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm actually a hypocrite kind of dad. Well, he says, do as I say, not as I do. That's right. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Hey, That's why we get frustrated. We want you, softball, we want you to do better than us, not do yeah. exactly what we want or what we do. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into our creator profile. Uh, everybody knows who it's going to be. No, the man himself, of course, Bruce Campbell. You wouldn't have any other. No way. other way. No other way. I thought about doing Sam Raimi, but I'm like, nah, because we're probably going to cover the other movies later, and that gives me an opportunity to do him instead. But for now, it's Bruce Campbell. You know, I just saw, I sent you guys a trailer for I some didn't show. Watch it yet, it's called Discontinued. Apparently, he's hosting some show where they talk about things that have apparently been discontinued. Bruce, come on, man. You can do better than that. And come on, man. You're on burn notice. You're great on burn notice. I, I tried mojitos because of that show. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> All right. I this is you. kind of a long one. I actually had to trim this one down quite a bit. Anyway, uh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Lorne Campbell was born in uh, Royal Oak, Michigan on June 22nd, 1958. The son of advertising executive and college professor Charles Newton Campbell and homemaker Joanne Lewis. Uh, what is Nay Pickens? That must be her original name. He is of English and Scottish ancestry and has an older brother named Don and an older half-brother named Michael. His father was also an actor and director for local theater. Campbell uh, Campbell began acting and began uh, making super or short Super 8 movies with his friends as a teenager. After meeting future movie maker Sam Raimi while the two attended Wiley Groves High School, they... Wiley Groves. I was going to say, dude, if it was Wiley Coyote High School... <laughs> That's a good high school. It sounds like a made up. It does like, sound. It sounds like it does like one like of those a, Disney. Yeah, um, like it, like it was like it was named after a famous like cowboy or something. It kind of sounds like something out of a um, James Gunn movie. Yeah, like probably. this is Wiley Grove High School. It's funny because James Gunn. Or no, no, no. We'll get there. Sorry, I was thinking of something else. But it would be because of you know it would be because of like Sam Raimi movies that he would right. call it you know that high school. So it's kind of <laughs> serendipitous, I guess, right. in that way. Uh. And continued to pursue an acting career. Campbell signed a VHS copy of Evil Dead in 2009. Campbell Cam, Campbell and Raimi collaborated with a 30-minute Super 8 version of the Evil Dead movie titled Within the Woods 1978, which was inten- initially used to extract in, uh, or attract investors. He and Raimi got together with family and friends to begin working on Evil Dead in 1981. Uh, while featured featuring as the protagonist Campbell also pertated, per, pertated, <laughs> mm-hmm. participated in the production of the movie, receiving a co, uh, co-executive producer credit. Raimi wrote, directed, and edited the movie while Rob Tappert produced. After an endorsement by horror author Stephen King, the movie slowly began to receive attention and offers uh, for distribution. Four years after its original release, uh, it became the most popular movie in the UK. It was then distributed in the United States, resulting in the sequel, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. Uh, Campbell was also drawn to the Marvel zo- or drawn in the Marvel Zombies comics as his character Ash Williams. He is featured. I have that comic book, that whole novel actually. Uh, he is featured in five comics, all all in the series Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness. 
and then he fights alongside the Marvel heroes uh, against the uh, heroes and people who become zombies or deadites while in search of the Necronomicon. Campbell, and he also hits on every female superhero in the book. Scarlet Witch being one of the main ones, like he max oh, on her hard. Of course. Yeah, he does too. And that's funny too, because then he wasn't he in the Evil Dead or not the Evil Dead, but the uh, Doctor Strange movie. The last he, uh, it was, he made like a brief. I think he was a cameo, yeah. but that was because it was directed by Sam Raimi. Yeah, which is fucking hilarious to me. <laughs> that's why they had a bit of the zombie stuff in it. Um, whenever he was bouncing through universes, yeah, uh, they had the Marvel zombies like a blip, like a quick clip of it in there. It was pretty wild. Um. Is that picture from that, or what is that from? No, that's Evil Dead too. No, that's just a. Drawing. I would say that's Army of Darkness. Uh, looks like the same hair. Definitely looks like more of an Army of Darkness thing. Yeah, yeah, because you can kind of tell by where he's wearing with his shirt Look and his the hair. hair. So I said it's yeah, the same probably hair. Right. That'd probably be Army of Darkness. Okay, is that the third? Fourth yeah, one? third one. Um. Da, 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 da. Campbell, who uh, also played Coach Boomer in the movie Sky High. He has appeared in several of Raimi's movies other than the Evil Dark Dead series, uh, notably having cameo appearances in the director's Spider-Man film series. Campbell also joined the cast of Raimi's movie Darkman. Uh, the Quick in, and The Quick and the Dead, though having no actual sh- screen time in the latter, movie's theatrical version. In March 2022, Campbell was announced to have a cameo in Sam Raimi's uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Magnus. Campbell of, uh, often performs quirky roles such as Elvis Presley for the movie Bubby, Bubba Hotep, which is a great movie. Also, with Bubba Hotep, he played a supporting role in Maniac Cop, Maniac, Maniac Cop 2, and spoofed his career in the self-directed My Name is Bruce. Have you seen that? You never seen My Name Is Bruce? It's good. It's a good uh, B. I wanted to fun slocky B movie. Been around to it. Yeah. <clears throat> it just happened. There's a lot of movies out there. So. There are a lot of movies out there. Other mainstream movies for Campbell included supporting uh, or featuring feature roles in the Coen Brothers movie uh, The Hudsucker Proxy and Michael Critchin adaption of. Congo. Oh, yeah, he was in Congo, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. For like three seconds. Yeah, he wasn't in there very long. Uh, he got killed pretty quick. Yeah. The movie so, version of Mikhail's Navy, Escape from L.A. He played the surgeon. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even tell it was him. Mm-hmm. Um, John Carpenter's Escape from New York, the Jim Carrey drama The Majestic, and the 2005 Disney movie Sky High. Campbell had a major voice role in 2009 anima- animated ad- adaptation of the children's book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and a supporting voice role in Pixar's Cars 2. Campbell produced the 2013 uh, remake of The Evil Dead, along with Raimi and Rob Tappert, uh, appearing in the movie's post credit scene in a cameo with the expectation he would reprise that role in Army of Darkness 2. The next year, the comedy metal band uh, Psycho Stick released a song titled Bruce Campbell, which... You sent to me, remember? Yeah. Yeah, it's on my playlist still. I still love that song. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, on their album, uh, something Revenge of the Ven- Revenge of the Vengeance. That's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> that pays a comedic uh, tribute to his past roles. Uh, Campbell worked on an executive produced uh, as a pro- <laughs> yeah. executive producer of twenty twenty three. Movie, Evil Dead Rise. Uh, Campbell at... What? Okay. Uh, Other than cinema, Campbell has appeared in a number of television series. He featured in uh, Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., a boisterous science fiction comedy western created by Jeffrey Bohm and Carlton Cuse? Cuse? Cuss? I don't know. That played for one season. Uh, I remember watching that show when I was a kid. <laughs> I do too. I uh, thought it was a, ran for a lot longer than that. I thought it did too. I thought it was more than one season. It's kind of like Mr. Bean. There was like 15 episodes, but as a kid, like... You thought it was dude, like... that was like an eight-season yeah. show for me. Um, 
He played a lawyer turned bounty hunter who was trying to hunt down John Bly, the man who killed his father. He was featured in the television series Jack of All Trades, set on a fictional island occupied by, by the French in 1801. Campbell was also credited as a ex, uh, co-executive producer, among others. The show was directed by Eric, Gr I don't know, I don't even want to butcher that name, and was produced by various people, including Sam Raimi. The show was uh, show was broadcast for two seasons from 2000 to 2001. He had reoccurring roles as Bill Church Jr., based upon the character of Morgan Edge from the Superman comics on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. You know, I've never seen a guy do so many shows, so many failed shows. Like, he's been in so many shows that are just like, that were bombs. Lasted a season, maybe two seasons. The two main shows that I could say I really remember him being on a lot was for, well, the one he was on the most was definitely, obviously, Burn Notice. He was in like every episode. But the other thing was like he was he had reoccurring roles on both Xena and Hercules. And like, I mean, he wasn't in there a lot, but he would go, you know, he'd have he'd do like one or two episodes a season. So where he played it crazy for being such an iconic actor. I know, like he has such a huge name and he's so iconic. And I don't think it has anything to do with his TV career. It's definitely his movie career mm. that people look at him mm. for. Um. He is also known for a supporting role on the reoccurring character Atalicus, King of Thieves, on both Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, and Xena, Warrior Princess, which reunite, re with him, reunited him with Robert Rob Tapper. Campbell played Hercules and Xena series produced uh, Tabbert in two episodes of Hercules set in the present. He directed a number of episodes of Hercules and Xena, including the Hercules series finale. Um... Campbell Cope featured in the television series Burn Notice, which uh, was broadcast from 2007 to 2013 by USA Network. He portrayed Sam Axe, a beer-chugging former Navy SEAL, now working as an unlicensed private investigator and occasional mercenary with his old friend Michael Weston. Okay, so if you guys haven't seen Burn Notice... It's a really good show. Like, it's a really good show. Like, that show is... Like, every season ends the same because you're like, ah... Because it's all about this dude he wants to get back into... Um, he used to be a spy, and he gets a burn notice. That's the name of the show. And the reason why he gets a burn notice is, like, essentially they retire his ass. So, but he he's trying to get back in to this company or whatever so he can become a spy again. And every season ends with, oh, he might get back in. And then it starts out, no, nope, you're not getting back in. You know what I mean? So, like, it's kind of dumb. The Every end season was dumb, but the show itself is really good. Like, Bruce Campbell and the main guy, I can't remember his name. Um, he's not even on here, his name. But the main guy who plays Mike Weston is pretty awesome, too. So, if you haven't seen that, I would check it out. Uh... When working undercover, his character frequently used the alias Chuck Finley, which Bruce later revealed was the name of one of his father's old co-workers. <laughs> Campbell was uh, the star of a 2011 burn notice made for television prequel focused on Sam's Navy SEAL career, which I, I did watch that too, titled Burn Notice, The Fall of Sam Axe. Uh, Campbell married Kristen Duval, Duval in 1983 and... They had two children before divorcing in 1989. He met costume designer Ida Girin, Girin, whatever, while working on Mind Warp. And they were married in 1992. They reside in Jacksonville, Oregon. Which is such a weird state for someone as famous as him to live. Maybe he likes a low-profile life. I know he's not a very open dude. Like, he don't talk about his personal life much, so. But, I can't really blame him. Yeah, but that's Bruce Campbell. If I was famous, I don't think I'd want to live in L.A. No. No, fuck no. <laughs> want to keep their, their no. private life. Yeah, keep their sanity. Out there in the, the public anyways. Right. I mean, that's how a lot of them keep their marriages going. Because that's how a lot of them keep their life. fucking jobs. Yeah. Is by not life. being openly. The really good ones never lived in L.A. Like, you know, Patrick Swayze, who kept the same wife the whole time. Me, they had a ranch in, like, 
fucking Texas a lot of them, dude. Jeffrey shit. Dean Morgan has a ranch over in fucking Tennessee or something. Yeah, that he might doesn't even some. live. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like a lot of these guys, they live on ranches or whatever, and, and like they just want to be secluded from all that bullshit. They're like, it's a job. They go make a movie and leave. Yeah, yeah. they're not there to get all up in the public's eye. It's and, their job, exactly. Yeah, some. Yeah. But I think I believe that a lot of those movies and or ma- movie actors that are that way are the ones who crave it. They got to have the attention. They have to be looked at because if they're not, they feel like they're failing at their job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, oh, I agree. I and agree. there's a lot of people like that. Like even, even Tom that, Hanks, as much as job. people love him, he's always in the public's eye. That's the kind of job that attracts those kind of people. Oh yeah. You, it's the rarity. Yeah. Because you know, they, they the start out on stages and what do people on stages like? They like to be looked at. Mm-hmm. That's why they're up there. You get the rare ones that don't want that. They just like, and if they you like hear half job. of their stories, they're like, I never meant to be an actor. I just kind of fell into it. You know, some of them people out there that Either are that living on ranches. Like, you know, I think it was, um, I think it was, it was Patrick Swayze where he said, you know, I grew up liking to play pretend and I just never got out of that. I really just like to pretend. Where and does, that's where he just stayed. Where does Norman Reedus live? Oh, I don't know. I know he don't live in LA. I know he's married to, uh, what's her face? What's her name? Something Kruger, uh, some, uh, he used to live in London, didn't he? I he know, might have. I, know he I don't know. I think he point. still does. I think he's over in France right now they, for the recording have, of Dixon. But. They have land. I know that, but I don't know where. It, I don't know yeah. if it's. And some of the people they have more than one home. And some though. of them will even live in California, but like on the outskirts of cities. I think and, they do have a house in L.A. Though who's that? Uh, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. I was wondering about them too. I bet they've got a house. They've I'm, got a few houses. I, I, say, I bet that. they got a few houses. I doubt they just live in. But LA. they do have one that has like land and acreage, and that's I know they spend a lot of time there. I'm sure so. they do. They're getting old. Yeah. That's, you that's know? their their home. Yeah, Kurt Russell was like everybody's dad growing up. I feel like mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, yeah, if you liked a cocky, bullheaded dad, yeah, that was definitely your dad. Oh my god! Like I watched every movie, and I just felt like I don't know. I loved Kurt Russell. Loved him in Tango and Cash. Overboard. Tango Cash is a Overboard. good movie. I Overboard, Overboard's a good one. Yeah, There's a lot of good movies with Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I love that part with the kid where she, she's making the sandwiches and she's like, Roy. <laughs> and he's like, my name is Travis. <laughs> she keeps calling him Roy my for like half the movie. My name is Travis. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see what everybody's been watching this week. Apparently we've got a few movies up our sleeves. What the hell have you been watching? Yeah, uh, big week. Nobody was working a lot. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, Madison, what'd you watch? I watched. Well, what I watched is what you watched, so I can't say it because I want you to say it. Okay. Because you're the one that wanted to watch it. Okay, fine. And then yeah. I watched. I watched a little bit of Future Man, but not a lot. And I watched an episode of Supernatural. And that's it. <laughs> Eric, what'd you watch, man? I watched uh, Tomorrowland with George Clooney. On, uh, that was one of those movies that people quickly forgot about. Yeah, I, I they really of, forgot about that movie. I don't think I've I ever heard it. of it. <laughs> See, I kind of enjoyed it. it Faded out pretty fast. It's it not about? a bad movie. Yeah. What was it about? Pretty much um, how like the I future like George becomes Clooney. like a new uni- new multi dimension and yeah, they tried to do a lot. They tried to make the a, a, a new Disney franchise. Yeah, and it just didn't pan out. It just it it's kind a, of flopped and fell movie, on its face. I I found it pretty good. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I watched that new genie movie with Melissa McCarthy. Ooh. Yeah. It was I'm so, okay. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I didn't know I'll there pass. was a new genie. Yeah, movie. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it. I'm good. It was okay. It was like a Christmas movie. And then I watched another, not really great movie at all. Triple uh, X: Return of Xander Cage. I watched that one. No, just I'm not. I mean, there's some good people new? in there that you love to see. Not really. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I didn't know there were so many. Yeah, movies. it's it's the it's, newer it's, one. It was nice. It came out to see, like, in like a lot of people came out like five there. or six years ago, like five years ago. But it was just like your typical Vin Diesel over dramatic. Yeah, guy. like oh, I gotta go. I'm so badass, yeah, even yeah, though I look like constantly constipated. Con- yeah, it was just very not. Watch the Italian Job. Nah, that's a good. Movie. He really does, oh, dude. He looks like somebody who's constantly just holding in a fart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't he? He's always just like. And he talks like this all the time. Pan, and like, pan. and he just looks like he's like, I'm trying really hard not to fart. Camera like, pans away, lets the loose thing. Like, like, oh. 
<laughs> and then uh, after I watched the Italian job, I just started watching the Halo, Halo TV show. That's okay. I've seen it. I'm not all the <laughs> way through it yet. Uh, the best episode is the last episode. Yeah. The fight s- sequence, like the battle sequence at the end, is pretty awesome. Are they coming out with another season? Or? I think so. I think they're. I think they're in the works for the second season. I wasn't happy with the first season. Yeah, I didn't want to see the Master Chief's face. Yeah, I was kind of. That was, was my biggest of, thing uh, with it. I didn't want to see it, and they got this whole side plot going on that I was like, "What the fuck is this? Where like, he what has, is like emotions? He's got emotions. He's like figuring out he's got emotions, and he's like finding out like." This girl that he's trying to make himself works for the covenant and all that. It's it's such a fucking weird thing. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I thought he was just here to fuck shit up. Right. Like, why are we getting like, I get it. You know, the first episode really reels you in because all the action. Oh, yeah. All the action and shit. You're like, yeah, fucking Halo, dude. And then it like get into like and it's all like, oh, like he takes his helmet off the end of the first episode. You're like, oh, you just killed it. You just killed it. Yeah, he he's not supposed to take his helmet off. I was like, oh, maybe he's going to have it. Like, he'll put it back on, and then, like, he'll just wear it. You know, he'll take it off every once in a while. No, nah, he just left it off the whole fucking series. Pretty it's like, all right, cool. So we're just, this is the Master Chief. He's got a face. I didn't want to see his face. Would have been cooler. I've seen shows like that where there's that guy that's got the air of mystery, and he takes off his helmet or whatever, and they only show the back of his head. So you still have that air of mystery. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're kind of sitting there like on the edge. Of and they've seat. done that before. Yeah. They've done that before. But like, if it wasn't for that, the show's not bad. It's entertaining. It's a really, it's got a great story. It's nothing. But if you come into the show as a fan of Halo and you know the story of Halo, you're not going to like the show. It's going to piss you off. Yeah. So I had to set that if, aside. If they would have done like what you said, where they just showed the back of his head or whatever. And maybe at the very end of the the, the show altogether, he takes off his head. You, I you can't see like an old version of him. I can't say maybe. anything because I know in the I don't books think you have to put it aside. In the books, they do describe what he looks like in the books. So I mean, I get why they, but they don't. The way the dude looks in the show, he doesn't look anything like that in the in the books. I don't think Either. you have to put it aside as a fan of the show. That's who they should be trying to impress. You would think so, but I had to set it aside in order to enjoy the show. But Dude, the show, it, but the, the show. show is good. You know what I mean? Like it's good. It's got a great story. It's very, very vibrant and very well shot. It's a beautiful show. My problem with the show, though, is that it's just. It's not like the, what I know the source material to be. You know what I mean? Like Wasn't the there like and... a short Halo movie where like you see a bunch of young Spartans? They take off their head helmets and they're young kids. Uh, and, like, it's it's a Master movie. Master Chief is the only one that doesn't take his helmet off. Well, the Master Chief is only in it Ooh. at the end of the. <laughs> Why are my dogs out? Moving on. What else did you watch? That was it. That's all I watched. Oh. Uh-huh. All right, uh, Karen. Uh, I watched Who's Line. And then the Righteous Gemstones. We're in a season two now. And I've made a decision. I think it's the Religious Sopranos. <laughs> With comedy? Sopranos. Yeah. It's well, a- the Sopranos had some funny moments. Yeah. And yeah, I, but not like this, though. I think Baby Billy is uh, Christopher. Baby Billy is amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not as annoying and terrible as Christopher, because at least Baby Billy's fun. But he is like the thorn in the side, so he's Christopher. <laughs> uh, planes, trains, and automobiles because it was Thanksgiving, so you had to watch the other one. Um, Shark and Saw's Shark Women's Prison Massacre. There was no prison in the movie. What? There was no prison in the movie. Oh, um, what's the movie? The the women like escaped from prison. Um, they were out like digging holes or whatever for the prison. And they escaped, and then there were land sharks, like sharks that swam on land. So a very B-rated whole movie. Very. So you're telling me that they said this movie's name is Shark and Saw Women's Prison Prison Massacre. Massacre. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they pitch this movie, they're like, but what prison are we Like, oh, oh, no, no, there's not going to be a prison in the movie. Correct. We mean there's no prison. It's, It's literally in the name. Yeah, but we don't need a prison. Correct. They just had like the... The van that said women's prison on the side or whatever. It just said women's so prison. It was a B-rated. Or Arkansas State women's prison or whatever. I don't know. I didn't pay that much attention because why? 
<laughs> right? <laughs> Why? I don't need the details. Yeah. I just... I know what I'm in for. I know what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the title says it all. So he says a B-rated horror holes movie. Well, the shark started out in water, and then it went inland. That sounds like some kind of weird dream you would so have. I, so it was like I Sharknado meets Tremors. B-rated. Yes. Okay. Except Tremors is still a lot better than well, that. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I'm That's sure cool. Sharknado might even be better. Mm. No? Maybe? I don't know. It was, it was entertaining. <laughs> there was some serious like moments like the very first dead body you see is all cgi and it's not even good cgi and was it the the truck scene where like the vehicle just had a sign explosion <laughs> no there isn't it a part just... where the guy's standing at the truck at his truck with a woman and says so how about we go back to my place and i eat your pussy no it wasn't anything like that either it was yeah. just like oh and uh tracy lords was in it who? Was any of the um, women menstruating to make the sharks come to them? I think that's her name. No. Okay. Um, well, then I, bubbles I don't understand what from, come to the land. Uh, oh, from Trailer Park Boys? No. Not no. That's a that's a boy. Oh. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just in uh, Dutch. No. That's who plays Bubbles, isn't it? No, Bubbles and... Um, Powerpuff Girls. No. God oh. bless it. It's... Uh, Fuck. We were just talking about it. Um, the only other, uh, bu- other bubbles I can know of is the one. Her name Bubbles. Bubbles. No, her name Bubbles. That's what the guy's. Oh, was. from Zach and Miriam. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. she was in it. Um, she played cop. <laughs> yeah. She played a cop. She played Did cop. she blow any bubbles? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> she was the badass cop too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the first body you see is CGI. It's not even good CGI. And I made a comment. I'm like, they couldn't even spring for some, like, spirit Halloween, like, body parts and right. throw some fake blood on it. Like, and then they did later. So. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm next... glad you, she watches them for us, guys. <laughs> I do. I like, I like shitty movies. I do. Like, I, I don't like to watch them all the time, but, like, when I'm in the mood. You got to be in the mood for something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we spent like one whole day doing that. We watched another one called the Pag- Paganani Horror, which is an. 80s. She woke up the next day much dumber. <sighs> I, I do okay. <laughs> She's the, drooling on herself like. Hey. <laughs> the Paganani Horror, which was pretty bad too. It was it was like an eighties movie. Um, the Requin. Anybody heard of this? It's another shark movie. No. Uh, apparently, I didn't know there was a was... Shark Week or something for you. I, Jeremiah I really likes bad shark movies. What is the deal? I don't know. I think you said His that. His mom to us does before. too. I found that out. He asked her about the Shark and Saw women's prison movie or whatever. She's like, "No, can I borrow it?" And I'm like, "Can I borrow it?" <laughs> she really likes bad shark movies too. But the Requin had uh, Alicia Silverstone in it, and you think it's going to be good, and it has like elements. Hold on, is this good? the one where she's like trapped inside a? And it's like a room, like and it's floating on water yeah. or something. Yeah. I think I've seen a preview for that. Yeah, one. yeah. Isn't there somebody else in that movie along with her? That's... Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know the guy's name. I've just seen him in stuff. Yeah. You think in, it's going to be good? He's in stuff. It looked like it would have been good. It starts out pretty good, and then like as it goes on, somewhere along the lines, you're just like, for fuck's sake, like, fuck, you know. Like this is dumb. <laughs> like oh. at some point in time, you're just like Jesus. Woman. How long like, is this going to go on? Yeah, like uh, the, stu- the stuff she starts to do gets on your nerves. You're she's like, she's like trying to make this comeback of some kind. Mm-hmm. She's been doing some. I of these, really wish she would though. She's like, been doing some of these lower budget movies. She's in a movie coming out, or it might be out. I don't remember what it's called, but she's in it with a few other bigger name people. She's in a movie right now. It's I think it's on Amazon. And it's got like vampires and or some shit in it. I don't know. I started watching it. And I was like, this is garbage. And because it just started out really slow and low budgety. And I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. I turn it off. But uh I feel like she's trying to make some kind of comeback because she's the she was like one of them weird ones in Hollywood that was like all natural. I gotta breastfeed feed my kids till they're 18 and yeah. all this. You know, she was really chewed fucking her weird. Food for them yeah, she chewed her own, like bird fed them to yeah. them and everything. She's fucking weird, ate man. And spit it back up into their mouths. I remember back in the day, she was like a bombshell, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like she was on every dude's wall. You know. Mm-hmm. Now you look at her, like what is what happened to you? 
<laughs> kind of like how we look at Britney Spears now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we watched Nazis at the Center of the Earth. That was okay. a fun one. Okay. Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Is that the that one was even too much for me. I that was bad. Is that the one with the T Rex and the Nazis and Hitler? No, no, that's um that one was good. I, no, you're thinking of um uh, Iron Air, Sky. Iron oh, okay. Sky. Yeah, Iron right. Sky is good. And Nazis at the Center of the Earth wasn't that bad either. It's just bad. Hard Ticket to Hawaii, that's bad. Subspecies, that's Fun. Loaded weapon. Of course. <laughs> Jeremiah hadn't seen that in like a hundred years. The Mexican. Wait, wait. Which one's that? Uh the one Brad Pitt. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, it is. The one with Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt. Jeremiah had never seen it, so Really? Yeah. It's a good movie. Torn Hearts, The Deep House, Reno nine one one, it's a wonderful heist. That was my Christmas movie. And when the screaming starts. That's it. Okay, wow. Uh, you watch a lot more than all of us. I usually together. do. <laughs> uh, well, we watched... Well, first off, we've been watching more of Impractical Jokers every day. Um, we managed to get halfway through The Orphan this today. But we had to stop it because dinner was done. So we were watching that. And then... Um, With the first one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, I haven't watched the other one. I don't really have I haven't. The, I don't really want to. I haven't watched it either. Um, we watched... I've been watching Invincible as it comes out every week because it's just a really good show. Like the animation kind of sucks, but the show itself and the story and the voice acting, it's all amazing. When is the next season of Vox Machina supposed to come out? Dude, the last season just came out a long ago, so we just watched it too fast. Oh. (laughs) So it's probably going to be a little while yet. That sucks. Yeah, it's a good show. Um, What else did I watch? Uh, we, uh, I watched Prey today with Ada. She, uh, she had never seen it, so we watched Prey. Uh, that I haven't watched it yet. Predator movie. You never seen it? I was, they got a. Uh, I'm working on. It. I think the only two Predator movies I've ever seen prior to the last one that I watched was one and two. If I had to go in order of, of like movies of like Predator movies that I really liked, like in order, it would probably go. Man, that's a tough one because I really have a soft spot for the second one. That everybody hates the second one. I was like, but it's I a don't good, remember the second one. It's like so good. Hardly other than I'm like, so city. it would probably have to be, man, probably one, two, and then Prey. I guess maybe I don't know. It's a toss up between all three of them, really, because they're all really good movies. And then, um, and then probably Predators. Because I don't care what anybody says, that movie is good. I just don't like Adrian Brody in it. Isn't there an Alien versus Predator? Yeah, there's two of them. Yeah, I don't, don't count those. You don't count those don't in count franchises. Those. Yeah, though. you don't count them in franchises. Uh, crossovers don't count in either yeah. franchise. Uh, and their own... Is it funny? Huh? Is it funny? I wouldn't say it's funny. Why would it be funny? Because they're going against each other, and they're... it's funny whenever people. I don't bash really each understand other that, no. that 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 uh, quarrel, Alien versus Predator. Well, I understand it. Because they said that they were using them to breed to, um, as a, um, kind of like how they do whenever they come to Earth and they find the best and they fight them and kill them and hunt them, whatever. They use the aliens to do that because they're hu- natural hunting machines. Okay. So that was the whole story for that or whatever. There was some kind of ritual behind it or something. I guess I just didn't understand it because I, I didn't know that. I didn't, I guess, I never saw the aliens. And they used humans to like incubate essentially these aliens so they would hatch and. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so that's why it took place on Earth. Anyway, uh, also watched uh, The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring with Madison. And she's been bugging me ever since to watch The Two Towers. Mm-hmm. That's because you can't just watch the first one, wait four months to watch the second one. I like, can't watch wait it. that long. I mean, mm. you can. He says I can't because it's a dad thing. But if he doesn't watch it soon, then I'm probably going to end up watching it because I can't wait that long or else I'm going to lose interest in a four hour long movie. It is a long movie. You get where I'm going? It is a long movie. It's three hours. I've seen hours. them once. I've seen them all. I'll never watch I've them I've watched again. them multiple times. Yeah. I want to watch the second one. The first... I hated them whenever I was a kid because they were so long. It has nothing to do with them being long. I think the second one's the best one. Because They're guy actually... movies. They're definitely guy yeah, movies. I don't know. It's nothing to do with it. I usually like guy movies. Like said, They're I not think... my cup of tea. <laughs> I think the second one's the best one because it's just got more action. 
So that one's good because it's got the trees. More. I think the assessment uh, of Kirk's about, too is The trees are awesome. That's a very, very, very slow part. <laughs> I it think the slow. assessment in Clerks 2 was correct. The battle parts in it that's really pretty well oh, done. I like them. But she, oh. I can't get her to watch Star Wars, though. I can't. I don't know what it is about Star I can't sit through Star Wars again. At this point in time, like she probably would have the same attitude I did about Star Wars. I didn't see Star Wars until I was in my 20s. At that point in time, you know everything. Mm. You've grown. If you've grown up on Earth, you know football. everything. <laughs> yeah, but it's still just there a good is experience. No, there is no... Surprise! There's there is more, no. There's a lot more lore to it than. Like, yeah, why? but not in the first. Excuse me, last three movies. Uh, yeah. Just say yeah. the first trilogy. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there's not. I mean, there isn't. Not unless you get into the books and all that other stuff. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot more lore. Yeah. To it. There's a lot of lore behind but Star somebody Wars. Somebody like me, I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to read the books. I'm just wanting to watch the movies because they're iconic. There's nothing new to garner from that stuff. Right. Uh, so I watched that. I watched, um, I think that might be all I watched. I watched something else. Pretty sure I watched another movie. Maybe. You were going to make me watch something, but then you backed out of it and we watched Lord of the Rings. If that's what you We were going to watch, me and Crystal were going to watch, um, God damn it, what was it? It was a movie she had never seen. And... I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was, uh, no, wait, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. But I did manage to go, so I was at Walmart today, and I picked up the um, the House of Thousand Corpses trilogy, all of them in, in, a, in a steel book, all of them in one thing. Was, I was like, hell yeah, I'll take that. Did you get it for free? <laughs> no. <laughs> they should have paid, paid you. <laughs> they should have paid me for taking it. <laughs> yeah. I got that. Uh, that's why I watched Prey, because I picked that up today, too, because it was the only Predator movie. Including the Alien vs. Predator movies that I didn't own. So I got that. I completed my collection because I own all the Alien movies too. Well, I take that back. I don't own Alien Covenant, I don't think. I don't think I do. That's the only one of those I don't own. But I own Prometheus and all them. And then um, I also picked up <laughs> the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie on Blu-ray from 94. Oh, the one where they go. 93, I think it was. And get like monkey and. The, they didn't go into space. They went to a different planet. Yeah, yeah. yeah they get like the animal. Yeah, they go to they they get teleported to a different planet, and uh, that movie's so fucking bad. Again, Doctor did they pay you? Yeah, <laughs> but I was like, it's something from your. You're like, I gotta own this movie. Like, I'm like, fuck it, dude. They got it here on Blu-ray. I'm gonna buy oh, that. I've never it. seen it. Yeah, you have. You've never no, seen I've it. Never yes, seen. I don't like. The, I've never you liked the Power Rangers. Rangers. What? Why? I don't like the Power Rangers. So Why? if you, like if you did Rangers. you like Psycho Gorman? Who's that? Psycho Gorman. It was the horror movie from like two, three years ago. It was like a few years ago. I don't know what that is. You don't know what Psycho... It's on fucking Shudder, man. I don't know what that is. You don't know what it is? About the guy from space. He's like... you never seen Psycho Gorman? Mm -mm. Oh, man. You watch all them B-rated movies. You got to watch that. Okay. I will rate it. If you... If you... Go ahead. If you like that, you... (laughs) The the Power Rangers is like the kid version of Psycho Gorman, dude. Like, well, if yeah, I don't, I don't like. I don't like no, Power I mean like Psycho Gorman. <laughs> it's it's just like a bunch of Jesus people in suits. Christ, it's I a bunch of people in like. It's like a bunch of people in like suits. Well, oh, it was back in the day. Really, Maybe dude? Like Coming from now. the gut person who's just like watching now, sharks but... swim through the planet, swim through <laughs> the planet, <laughs> through <laughs> dirt and earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever. It was a. It we was had a, it on VHS. What do you call it? A very, very old shark. What do you call that? A megalodon? No. It was like, they thought it was extinct, but it's not. Yeah, a megalodon. No, not one that we know. Oh, I don't know. Well, how would I know then? No, no, not the, not the, like, oh, the my name goodness. of it. Like a, mm, I can't remember what they called it. Endangered? The, the movie what was... do you call? Endangered means that we know about it. Oh. They're just almost dead. Dad, what do you call an old shark? I can't remember the, the word. A great white, because he's great and old, and he's got white hair. So sharks don't have hair. The movie. Great whites do. (laughs) I grow hair the older they get. (laughs) The movie was a lot better than the TV show, hands down. Yeah, yeah. There's more of a budget there. It's actually filmed like a movie. It's not. It's not filmed like the show was. So instead of five dollars, they got ten. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I mean, the, the CGI in it was a little... Oh, the CGI at the end was terrible. Yeah, a little terrible. But, but like, all the other stuff is really good. Yeah. Like, the sets I are huge. I absolutely hated the song. So the song in this, there are the song is in this one. Wait, you hated the Power Rangers song? I, hated I don't blame it. her. It was terrible. It was. But like in this, in this though, they like actually have like I'm sorry big <laughs> name songs. I, I'm probably the most hated person right now. But I just, no, I doubt I could it. Not stand the Power Rangers. I doubt it. We had, like I said, we had it on VHS, and I watched it all the time when I was a kid. So you had to watch some of it. No, I probably did not. I probably walked. The, we remember we had like 80 TVs in our house. You probably turned it on. I walked away. Mm, not at grandma's. <laughs> Uh yeah, we had where four TVs it. in her house, two upstairs and two downstairs. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm, you're probably right, but I don't want to say anything because you're my sister. No, so. we might have had three TVs, not four. One in mom's room, one in the playroom, two downstairs. I don't remember two upstairs at all. You guys are rich. The one in the playroom was this big, and the one in mom's room was this big. The biggest You're rich. The biggest Back then, TV. those were big TVs. That was my biggest TVs house. my grandma had. <laughs> Grandmas were always style. rich. It's true. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Whatever happened to the Red Power Ranger? Why wasn't he in the, the movie from the TV show? I, I have no idea. He's in some legal shit right now. Is he? That dude who played him? Probably yeah. got in legal shit back then. That's why he wasn't. No, he? he's in some legal well, shit right now because apparently um, he was involved in some like fraudulent type shit with some people and i'm not sure if he even knew what was going on but he's looking at some prison time if, and if you, know he gets what? you guys knew this about me because when we talked about the green ranger and all that stuff happening i was like you know i didn't like the power rangers but i don't the blue I'm ranger sorry that it I know, happened i know the blue ranger and the, the red ranger the actors both didn't like each other because the red ranger dude was always making fun of the blue ranger dude because he was gay yeah, that was a uh, that one I do remember. Yeah, I, I know the Blue Ranger guy. Well, it wasn't just him. It was a lot of people. Yeah, it was a lot of them. So he was a bully. So yeah. they probably kicked him off because of that. I have. I don't know. I don't Maybe. know the story behind all that. I'm going with that. But anyways. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's get into our movie this week. Let's talk about the movie. Which is The Evil Dead from 1981. The Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. Yes, get it right. Yeah, it is exactly what's called The Evil Dead. Yep. Because if you, you have say to put the Evil Dead, you have to put the, the in front of it, or he's going to have a connection. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's Evil it is Dead, the Evil Dead, though. It's evil not... Dead was two thousand. I know, but every time we said Evil Dead, he was like the <laughs> the Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. Let's get it right, guys. Um, who wants to read the movie? I can. It's not super long, so. Um, oh, so he's going to hand it to me because he thinks I'm stupid. He never said that. He said, said it wasn't Shh, long. Karen. Oh. Uh, watch that cord. Um, you got a plot synopsis? Yeah, Five right vacationing here. college students unwittingly resurrect demonic spirits through the Book of the Dead. <clears throat> now there is no escape. The guilty must be punished. So Ooh. would we watch again? One hour, 25 minutes, NC-17. Uh, Bruce Campbell is Ash. Ellen Sandwis as Cheryl. Richard DeManicor as Scott. And Betsy Baker as Linda. Teresa, Tilly is Shelly. All right. Uh, would you watch? Would you recommend? Uh, Eric? Um, okay, so this one's going to be the tough one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would I recommend it to anybody? If you've watched Army of Darkness and Evil Dead 2, I would recommend that you watch this. But as far as that goes, no, I would not recommend it. And no, I probably won't watch it again. I, I cannot put myself through that torture again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Karen. <laughs> yes and yes. I don't give a fuck who I tell it to. If they don't, if they don't want to watch it, don't fucking watch it. But I'm going to tell people to watch it, and I'm going to watch it again. Okay. She'll, she'll sit there and watch the torture on their face, like. Yeah, I would show it to people just to be like. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> I do that in movies too. Uh, coming out of their mouth. Like, <laughs> Ma- Madison, would you? Yeah, 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 yeah. It might take a minute for me to be able to watch it again, but yeah, I'd recommend it and I'd watch it again. Uh, I think for me, it's I'm gonna recommend it to people who <gasps> I'm telling the truth because I actually I actually recommended it earlier because someone was like, I need movie suggestions. I was just like, I'll watch the watch Evil the Evil Dead. Dead. <laughs> and so um, ask you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're gonna watch it. Well, I'm not asking her for fucking <laughs> for <laughs> any more suggestions on what to watch. <laughs> You're on a movie podcast? What? <laughs> uh, I I would recommend this movie to two types of people. People who love horror movies and people who love Bruce Campbell movies. Aside from that, 
it's not a must watch for a lot of people. I can tell you right now, I love Bruce Campbell, but I'm never clamoring to watch the first Evil Dead. I just think people need to open their horizons a little bit. Maybe, yeah. But like, That's I think much. in the case of, given the budget of what this movie had, they did a lot with it. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot here. There's a lot unpack. of franchises that came out of this. But some of it is so fucking cheesy that, yeah. and, and it's just like, you don't understand why certain things are happening and why certain people are doing certain things. You're like, what are you doing? Like, her wandering point. into the woods, like, as far as she did. Why did you go? Gotta, oh, yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. I know you're out there. Out. And I then she was running you. for, like, five minutes back. She's like, how far out did you walk? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. I, 100%. But I was actually surprised. I remember, like, I I think I might have only seen this once. But I remember watching it and thinking, this is the dumbest fucking movie I've ever seen. And then uh-huh. watching it this time and going, you know what? It's not as bad as I remember. It's, it's not as bad as I remember. It's not as it's not as um, uh, ludicrous or like you know. Right. I remember like it was bon- like, everything else was like bonkers and yeah. Goofy I remember and... thinking like, oh my god, this is just ridiculous. But yeah. I think I was meshing one and two together in my head mm-hmm. because this is a lot more serious than I remember it. It's being. very serious. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna say yes. I'll recommend it to certain people. I'm not going to recommend it to your mom. Your mom's not going to care about this movie unless she's a horror movie buff. My mom might have. Your mom might. My mom wouldn't. My mom's going to be like, this movie was dumb. (laughs) Um, But I will. This is a movie that I've seen quite a few times. And it, but it's a movie that I don't always get excited about coming back to. If you, you can, you get the same story from evil dead Two. Yeah, you do. It's just evil dead Two making fun of evil dead one. Actually, it's there's it's a better. reason that you did <laughs> too. Was I know. The reason I know. it was made, and, and it's better because it's fun. It's goofy. It's just as fucking slap. It's very slap happy. It's very Slapstick. good. It's a good fucking movie. Like the second one is. This one is just like Sam Raimi's practice round. You know what I mean? Like that's what this is. And I, you know, just watch the second one. That's what I say. And we're gonna pull it eventually. So because it's in the box, and I'm excited for that. I'm very excited. The one, two, and Army of Darkness are the fucking shit. I don't care what anybody says. I love those movies. Those are like up there for me. Army but without Darkness this one, you don't have those. Exactly. So I can't hate this movie. There's bad things about this movie, but this movie still holds a place in my heart. There's a lot of bad things about this movie, but there's a. I don't know how to explain it. Something great has came out of something bad. Let's put it that way. I feel like, like you said, it was like a learning curve for all of them. Yeah. But in that learning curve, you saw a lot of um, mastery happening. For sure. I guess. I think he did there a lot were... with a very small budget. There were... So yeah. he did do a lot yeah, and, with a small budget. And you're budget. seeing a lot of um, learning happening, I think. And a lot of um, were... passion Mm-hmm. going on there were I a guess. lot of camera angles and stuff that they kept from the first movie that went in through all the movies that made you know like when yeah. they went up to his face and the way he, you know and i love that about the movie yeah. that's what i love about sam raimi exactly. he does he does a lot of that shit with his camera mm-hmm. again eric again I'm eric deep, eric the terminator <laughs> don't appreciate that shit <laughs> one of these days he's gonna terminate you well maybe he should uh come, come back from the future and move himself <laughs> <laughs> Put it over like, here. Like, Tired of here, you man. knocking me over. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get into our movie here. Uh, Madison's going to read our plot. <clears throat> and uh, we'll discuss. The Evil Dead. Uh, five right. mich- She did. <laughs> I'm sorry. She even emphasized the. I know. That's what I said. Make sure it's right. Now I got to start over. <sighs> the Evil Dead. Yeah. By Michigan State University students, Ash Williams, his girlfriend, Linda, Ash's sister, Cheryl, their friend, Scott, and his girlfriend, Shelly, venture into a rural, 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 sure, Tennessee to vacation (laughs) in an isolated (laughs) cabin. (laughs) They soon run into trouble with Scott nearly colliding with a truck, then barely getting the group to safety. When the bridge that first part, the he's like cabin. back there and he's like reading the map, and then like it, he almost hits the uh truck and he's like automatically Bruce Campbell's face is like up beside, it. look out, like <laughs> hanging his head outside the car, yeah. and then the girl's face, ah, 
<laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> when they pass the fucking two people on the side of the road and they look like people are waving at them, I'm not waving at you, fuckheads. I'm like, <laughs> what they do to you? Yeah, what they do to you? you. He's just a dick. That was Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you listen to the Latin closely when the guy's yeah. doing the incantation, um, it actually says that in the Latin. What? Like it says like Sam and Robert at the side of the road at the beginning, but it says it all Latin like. Really? Mm-hmm. That's weird. Mm-hmm. wonder who the guy is that's, that's on the tape. Is that in trivia? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I didn't put it in trivia because none of us would have known him. He was some. Um, uh, Dude off like, the side of the road. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was some. Hey, you um, want to be in a movie? Well, not you, but your voice. <laughs> it was some guy that was like a, a TV announcer. Oh. That um, Sam knew. Okay. Like he was. He was. I just kind, He was like a famous guy, but like we wouldn't have known him. Right. Okay. Um. Then barely getting the group to safety when the bridge leading to the cabin hints at signs of collapse. That night, while Cheryl is sketching an old clock... That she... bridge bugged me, honestly. Why? Um, I don't think I wrote it down or anything, but, like, if you're going across the bridge and it's about to fall apart, I'm done at that point. Back up, because how the fuck are we going to get home? Yeah, you got to drive back you across You have to go back bridge. across it. She can't handle bridges at all anyways. Well, it doesn't matter. Like, if you're going... If, even, like, persons that don't have a problem with bridges... You have to go back across it to get home. Yeah. Like, any logical person is going to go, okay, we can't cross this bridge to go, so how are we going to get back? That Just whenever, back up, we're it done. Says it's that not whenever safe. the wheel got stuck in it, that should have said something. Yeah, we're done. Back up. That, I don't and they acted like it was no big out, fucking like, deal. Uh, like, trip like, over, find a hotel. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Which, I don't think the wheel would have been able to get, get out of that hole like that. I don't think that's how physics works. It depends on if it's a front wheel or a rear wheel. I was going to say, if it's, rear, and it's likely it's rear wheel drive, all cars back then were. Also, yeah, if he's got if he's got traction on the other tire, he could get out. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yes. No. Or just disagree with me because you, <laughs> you know so much about cars. I know so much about disagreeing with you. Yeah, I know. Oh, I did write that down. No one wants to talk about the fact that they'll have to cross that bridge to go home. While Cheryl's <laughs> sketching an old clock, she notices it's stopping. She hears a faint demonic voice outside the window say, join us. After she shrugs, shrugs it off, her hand becomes possessed, causing her to draw a picture that looks like a book with a deformed evil face. Unsure of what happened and what to do, she decides not to mention the incident to the others. When the trap door to the cellar mysteriously flies open during dinner, Ash and Scott go down to investigate and find the Naturan Demanto name. Book of the Dead. Yeah. Um, a Sumerian version of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, along with a tape recorder belonging to the archaeologist. Archaeologist. Well, there's an A and then the E. Yeah. Archaeologist. So the A is silent? Sure. Okay. I was going to say archaeologist, but then I saw the A and it threw me off. Uh, Belonging (laughs) Archaeologist. Archaeologist. Arche- well, I knew that was just wasn't making up thing. new uh, <laughs> new words. Um, archaeologist. Archaeologist who owned it. When Scott plays it, the archaeologist's voice recites a series of incantations resurrecting a mysterious demonic entity. Entity. <laughs> entity. <laughs> Cheryl becomes increasingly hysterical and locks herself in her room. Later, she hears strange voices and goes outside to investigate. You know, Cheryl's that one girl you never wanted to invite to the sleepover because yeah. you know you're going to get, like, scared at the sleepover because you're going to do something that you're not supposed to, like, go outside at 3 a.m. Yeah, Cheryl's definitely, like... Herself. Like... The lame one? The la- yeah. yeah, like... She got on my nerves a lot. I, like, I don't want to say that she deserved to got raped or anything by like a tree, oh, but no, and, you know that's the thing is like her the actress that plays her is the first one to jump up and down and tell everybody to back the fuck off when they start in about the rape scene being, um, like oh that's terrible it wouldn't happen today they shouldn't do that stuff blah 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 and she's like there's nothing wrong with it it was it's it was fake. important it was. It's important to the story. It, it was, was fake. A, it was, you know, How was it got it got people's attention. Like it, 
served its purpose. Because it's, it's it, it plays her, for shock value, and that's there's yeah, nothing wrong with that. It's funny as that, long as you understand the difference between what's real and what's fake. It's not a big fucking deal. I just find it funny that she plays this really uptight character. Oh shit! I forgot. The, I just remembered. Watch Dawn of the Dead, the remake. Ah, yeah, that's it's a great movie. fucking movie. I bought that too. I like that movie. Um, but like, ha ha. I knew there was another movie because well the baby the ba- the zombie baby, baby zombie. maybe remember and I'm like oh yeah the zombie baby because yeah. you know they kill the zombie like baby yeah. but yeah like uh, that's a great movie it is a really good movie uh, I think it was Madison said she had never seen it no it's really good you watched it's it though, didn't you no oh Ada watched it yeah yeah Ada it's really liked favorite, it yeah. oh that is one of my favorites probably my s- it's my second, second favorite, favorite it's my second zombie favorite. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first being Shaun of the Dead. Mine's Day of the Dead. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ash gives Linda a silver necklace, which she loves. Cheryl is then attacked and raped by demonically a demonically tree possessed trees, but manages to escape. Unable to Lots convince the flesh. others of what happened, she asks Ash to In take her places. into town for the night. However, Ash soon discovers that the bridge has been destroyed. Back at the cabin, Ash listens to more of the tape, learning that the only way to kill the entity is is to dismember the body when it possesses a host. Cheryl succumbs to the entity entity and attacks the others, stabbing Linda in the ankle with a pencil before Scott can force her into the cellar. Shelly becomes possessed as well, forcing Scott to chop up her body with an axe and bury the remains. Shaken by the experiment experience, he leaves to find a way back to town. <laughs> I'm going to experiment on chopping up my girlfriend. <laughs> You're next, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> when Ash goes to check on Linda, he is horrified to find that she has already begun to turn. Badly injured Scott staggers in the cabin and dies of his wounds, having been attacked by the trees. This While Ash tries like to figure out what to do, her, both Linda and Chip. Like, everybody else's makeup went straight to being fucking horrific. And yeah, and hers was, was like, was uh, like yeah, but I think it was intentional, though. That was, was definitely intentional. It was. Yeah. Like, like the whole, like, the demonic <laughs> stuff. Like, hers she was supposed to be like. She was She was. Like, she was supposed to be like a demonic child or no, some shit. No, dude, like, I remember the first time Janus! watching that and thinking, like, she's the creepiest <laughs> because of, like. Her facial. At first, she's annoying, but, like. That yeah. laugh after a while. And her, like, yeah, <laughs> and her facial expression, like the, the contour of her face and everything. Okay, we get it. The contour of her face and everything while she's smiling and doing that, it really works with the makeup, and I think they did a really good job. Honestly, they did a really There's good job. There's actually a, a, not There's that reason. reason, but there is a reason. <laughs> that makes oh. sense. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. I thought it was all right. I didn't um, have a problem with it. No, I thought she was actually... More Pro- well done than the others. I was saying, she was probably the scarier others, than the Deadites. They were melting at some points, and that was for good reason, too, but... Because of the fucking lights? No, because at some point... I don't remember if I put it in trivia or not, so if I did and I have to repeat myself, I'm sorry, but um, it was really, really cold, which I'll talk about that, too. It was mm-hmm. really, really cold, and so when they finished up, like, the... When they thought that they were finished filming, like, everybody went home, but Sam and Bruce and um, Rob. And then they realized that they needed to do some reshoots because there was this missing and that missing and whatever. So then like Ted Raimi and a bunch of other, like you remember how it said like um, stand in Shemps or whatever in the, the credits. That's all those other people that stood in for those girls that left. Oh, So that's why they look different in certain scenes because that's not them. Yeah. The one with the grandma hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like when she goes in the cellar and the first time you see her in the cellar and she got gray hair and that weird face, that's not her. Well, I'm talking, it's about, obviously I'm not talking her. about Bruce Campbell's girlfriend when he's like putting her in the grave. She got grandma hair. Yeah, so I don't. She I, did I, too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Any, I didn't anytime, understand that. Anytime you see them and they don't look right, it's probably yeah, not the them. Oh. They're probably the stand-ins. I know Ted Ramey, man. He used to put him through hell, dude. I know in the second one, even, he had to wear that fat suit. Uh-huh. I guess he was sweating so much oh, in that yeah. that they, at, whenever they he got out of it, they literally had to drain it of sweat, like tip it upside down and drain it. I'd Ugh. probably puke. Oh, man. It was fucking... He said it was terrible. Uh, I bet. Can you imagine how things smelled? Yeah. Putting it back on and everything? Uh. 
Like, you want me to get back? It's still wet from yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) While Ash tries to figure out what to do, both Linda and Cheryl pretend to be human again, only to quickly revert to their demonic forms. (laughs) Ash locks Linda outside, but she returns and tries to stab him before he impales her with a Sumerian dagger. He tries to cut up her remains with a chainsaw, but can't bring himself to do so. Was that the first time or second time that they used that dagger? Because the first time they used it, good God, dude, she was that screech. I think, I don't know if it was meant to like get under your skin and drive you insane because of how long it went on and how annoying it was. Yeah. Or if it was just like, it was, it was on an accident. Like it was just listening to her screech. Like, I understand the point of the blade. The blade was just a normal blade because it really didn't do anything differently. That's the problem with this movie. It didn't. And then she was like licking on it. So I was like, what's the point of that fucking blade? That that actually was supposed to be like their Achilles heel. Like if you use the blade, it was supposed to kill them. But. Um. Yeah. See, that's the problem with this movie is that like if you you have to know so much of the background in order for it to like make sense, and you can't really put it in the movie because then it doesn't make sense anyway. You know, like the necklace. They'd already spent so much time on making it important that they had to work that in somehow, and that's why the blade became insignificant. Yeah, they did too. The, the necklace really didn't mean much, even still. I mean, he just used it. To he just used it to grab. The but that's book. why they had to work that necklace back in, and that's why the blade became insignificant. Which is dumb. But I feel like the blade should have been more. Yeah, the blade should have been. More I don't important. disagree. That's originally what was supposed to be yeah. the. And why not work both of them in there? I mean, I don't see the issue in that either. So I'm not Sam Raimi, man. Right. Well, like you said, this is a trial run. Yeah. <laughs> So like I said, this isn't a movie that you exactly recommend to just anybody. It's just a movie that if you, you're you a fan of this franchise, you, you have, have to, to go watch into it. it and the the right people are going to understand that. Yeah. You're not going to walk into it going, that's an Oscar winning movie and yeah. we're going to get lots of awards for it. You just have to go into the movie and just enjoy it. Just watch it for what it is. Don't don't put too much into it. Yeah. Um when he reaches for a necklace on the ground, she escapes again trying to kill him. Ash decapitates her with a shovel, and her headless body bleeds all over Ash's face as it tries to rape him before he escapes. Back in the cabin... And and this is another part where he gets up and he's walking away. He's completely clean. Completely clean. There's no blood, not a drop of blood on him. Some of the... Sometimes they get squirted on... Sometimes they get squirted on, dude. That shit looks like the Hershey squirts coming out of them, like... It just it looks bad. It's like, God damn, are they shitting on him? Like, (laughs) you know, the only thing, like, I think that people who really enjoy movies and like love movies are going to like movies like this just because they understand what they were trying to do Yeah, as, as filmmakers, they were just trying to enjoy making a movie. This movie was not, it's not ahead of its, it was never ahead of its time. It was just a guy and some friends trying to make a movie and, you know, and doing a damn good job. They were doing a good job with what they had, the low Mm -hmm. budget that they had. They had no budget for this movie. And so I think they did a pretty good job for what they had, especially the end with the claymation and stuff. Like, oh yeah, like it was it was the best they could do. Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah, I remember watching that claymation, thinking, I wonder how long that took. Because, uh, I bet it didn't take very long. Oh, <laughs> claymation did. takes forever. It does, and but not sequence? the way this one was shot. Like this one was like, that it sequence? probably still took a while. But oh yeah. Compared to like stop motion, the way they do, it, they actually do stop it. Stop motion does take a long time, but I th- I would argue that claymation takes just as long because you've got to like mold and yeah, I mean, and that sucks. Anyways, um, back in the cabin, he quickly realizes that Cheryl has forced open the trap door. After wounding her with a shotgun, he heads to the basement for more am- ammunition. There, the entity. Mm. tortures him by dousing him with blood from a pipe while more blood seeps from the walls and ceilings uh sure when ash goes back upstairs scott is revived as a possessed and attacks the boy while cheryl savagely beats him with a fireplace poker Ash gets his hand on the book by losing Linda's necklace and throws it into the fireplace. Mm -hmm. As the book burns, Scott and Cheryl begin to gruesomely decompose, and their blood sprays all over Ash as he stares in horror and disgust. After Scott and Cheryl are dead, Ash hears the voice of the demon telling him to join us as the voice dies away as well. 
Ash grabs Linda's necklace in gratitude, covered in blood of his friends and sister and girlfriend. Ash stumble, stumbles outside as the sun begins to rise. Before he can get in his car to leave, the entity attacks him from behind. The very last shot of the film is Ash letting out a final scream of terror before the film cuts abruptly to the ending credits. <sighs> there it is. Which is also dumb. Yeah. So, there, there was another thing, like, right after he came back in from killing his, his girlfriend or whatever... Cheryl's trying to steal the shotgun away from him, right? And then he runs to the front door trying to keep her from coming in. And then the back door. Regardless of all the windows and everything. That she I know. Does, simply just walk in. I know. Like, I remember the one part. He's, like, shutting the door. And it's like, he shuts it. Like, oh, my God, I'm safe. I'm like, that window that is, like, two feet next to you is completely busted out. And it's as big as you are. And uh-huh. literally the window <laughs> she was just trying to grab the gun through, she could have just walked right in through that. Damn, yeah, because it's already breaking wide open. I <sighs> one thing you said that like the end part with that was done too. I think it keeps. I think it's in keeping with the rest of the series. I do too, but I didn't like it because <sighs> I don't like it because where was the resolution? Like the dagger didn't mean anything. Burning the book didn't mean anything. Well, that's there the was point. no. That's the point. It keep. It's in keeping with the rest of the series. In every single movie, there's no way to kill the, the Deadites. There's no way to resolve it. They're just there. Right. That's why you can never kill Jason. Like, you could never kill the Deadites. That's the whole point. Like, there's never a way to do it. And Besides if there is... Chopping them up. If there is a way, they never reveal it. Just like, remember, we talked about in Evil Dead Rise. They talk about, you know, in the books, like, you know, there's no way to do this. We can't figure it out, blah, blah, blah. In every single Evil Dead movie, there's never a resolution. They never resolve it. They never get rid of the dead eyes. Right. I get that, but like, I don't know, just at the end, it was just kind of like burning the book, the dagger, none of it did anything. None of it had at any point. They never do. You know, like in the second one, which I don't want to give away, I guess, but I guess there really wasn't much resolution to no, that. No, it just takes but, you straight into the third one. Right, right, right. Anyway, and, and uh, he, he goes down to the basement to get shotgun shells, and he literally grabs one and then leaves the rest down on the table. <laughs> you notice I they go down to the basement, think, man, they go down to the basement, scene, like, and, and they have that uh, Hills Have cool. Eyes like poster ripped up down there, and you can tell it's like blatantly like a brand new poster that somebody just ripped up. And oh, we're yeah. gonna put this. It's, it's one, sh- I, I know it's a little. It's a shot at Wes. Craven. Yeah, it's a shot at Wes Craven because Wes Craven put a Jaws poster in the Hills Have Eyes. As a shot to Spielberg yeah. to say your movie's not scary, mine is. So then Sam Raimi put the Hills Have Eyes poster in there to say your movie's not scary, mine is. <laughs> Which I heard the Hills. I have never seen the original Hills Have Eyes, but it's I heard not it's good. garbage. Yeah, it's not good. I, I will the say Wes Craven good. is one of my favorite directors ever, and he usually does good work. The Hills Have Eyes is not one of them. The remake is much better. Well, the remake's really good. Yeah, I will say here's one positive. I'll come out just swinging at the very beginning. One thing that I really love about movies like this is that a lot of innovation happens. And one thing that they did in this movie because they didn't have the budget was that crawl. And it has stuck through every single movie and it works. Oh yeah. It's just like, you know, jaws. Mm -hmm. They had to use, you know, first person perspective because the fucking shark didn't work. Well, they didn't have any way to make their monster. So they just use that crawl. Used a crawl. And it yeah. fucking and it works. works. So, you know, there's an innovation that, that and I'm came not even sure like the that budget. they had I don't even think that they had any idea what the monster really looked like anyhow. So and I kinda like that. I like that it's faceless. For sure. For sure. So. But it's also a product of not having the money to right. create one. Even if they wanted to. So in Jaws, you never actually see the shark. You do, you do see the shark, you do, yeah. but like it's very seldom. Not like they wanted to. They wanted that shark to be like a centerpiece. Yeah, they wanted it to be like front and center all the time. Yeah, they they just couldn't do it. That fucking shark never worked. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when you put mechanics underwater. This shit. <laughs> you know, for like being a trope, the whole camping with your friends and all that. Like, I don't remember ever like being a teenager and being like, "Hey guys, you want to go camping in the woods?" Dude, so, I so, would love it if my friends went camping with well, me, though. But here's my question. So, like, did that die off because of movies like this? Uh, was that a thing before? And well, then it died off because of movies like my, this? Me and my like, friends like to camp. 
growing up and stuff. We love doing that stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I was in scouts, so I went camping a lot. Yeah, we went camping. It's it's more of a know. boys like, me thing. And my, me and my friends never really talked. See, about I always thought it was more of a boys thing, like getting your girlfriends and like ch- girl like chick friends to go with you. Like that's. That usually doesn't happen, but yeah, I mean, as boy, as a boy, I remember growing up yeah. and my friends being like, let's go camping, you know? Well, I mean, like even scenarios like this where you've got a cabin to go to or whatever, like there was never any, hmm, there was never like trips, you know, like my friends. And stuff, I like, think so. Like, I oh. think that if, I think that if you get uh, the right group of friends or whatever, they would probably be like, hey, let's go get a cabin for the weekend, you know what I mean? And hang out and. Get Maybe drunk nowadays, and have fun. I'm just saying like back in, Fuck back it, then, like it was never. No, because there's, I know there's a bunch of. I have a bunch of chick friends and everything, and I know none of them would want to go camping, mainly because I don't think any of them would be able to live like without their phones. Without their phones, <laughs> even in but a cabin, I would though? love to go camping. Even in, in, like, a, cabin? in a cabin, though, probably not. Most of them are scared of their own shadows because so. of movies like this. But I would love to get a hockey hill. Well, that was my question. Do you think that things like this fell out of style because of movies like this? I think so. Think I think was... that something. I think that movies like this really scared people out of the idea of like, this yeah. and and uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Those movies. Those like, are you crazy? Groups of friends together at a party doing, you know, with and and shenanigans and all that. Like that is something that was scared off by slasher movies and horror movies like this. And yeah, I do think that movies like this had a lot to do with that, because before that, I believe that friends would go out and do things like this and and that. But now it's scary to do. You know what I mean? Before the eighties and the seventies and eighties, like it probably wasn't that big of a deal. But now, yeah, it's definitely like, oh my, I'm not going. It's scary. Like, what are you scared of? Yeah, there's literally nothing in the woods, Might trees and animals. It's dark. <laughs> yeah, like I don't get scared. I'm I'm also. 37 years old. <laughs> Don't get scared of the dark, you know? The one, this was a part that bugged the shit out of me when the door swung open, the cellar door swung open, and uh, Cheryl says it's probably an animal. Oh, and then that. and was... Scott, <laughs> Scott says that's the dumbest thing he's ever heard of. <laughs> and then somebody else says it's probably an animal. And he goes, yeah, it probably is literally yeah that's how it went down she says it's probably an animal he says that's the dumbest thing i've ever said or you, you've ever said and then i think it's ash's girlfriend says it's probably an animal and he says yeah it probably is literally <laughs> I, I literally quoted the movie and i was like excuse me he fuck? changed his mind just don't like her that's the... apparently i mean like i, don't think I he... mean he was cur- he was good enough to like chop her up so Oh, well, was, no, it was, he, no, that, that was his girlfriend he chopped up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't think he liked Ash's sister, but to be honest with you, neither did I. That's fair. I mean, it she, also makes zero sense that she went outside after. Mm-hmm. Dude, her leaving the room for one, like, is anybody there? Like, if there's anybody there, maybe you should go get somebody to go out she with you. She didn't ask. Or... She said, I know someone's there. Yeah. If you I know they're you. there, why the fuck are you walking out there? And then you walk like. Yeah, like a hundred yards, yeah, 100 out. yards well, or more out. Like scared. So if you're that fucking scared, it makes zero sense that she would go out there by herself. Yeah. Or go out there at all. Yeah. Like you go get a one of the guys if you're that fucking scared or whatever. Hey, yeah. somebody go outside get your brother. my window. She started out for me like she started out with the most common sense until she did that. that yeah, was, absolutely. Yeah, 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 she walked clear out it to the woods. It makes zero sense for her And character. after the tree rape scene, like it took her like forever to run back. Like how far out did you walk? Right. Like I thought the same thing. I'm like, Dude, she she walked like forever. Yeah, and then it took her two seconds to run back. Yeah, yeah. The the, the parameters didn't make any. sense. They don't make any either. fucking sense. Like like you walked out there for two seconds, and then it took you twelve years to run all the way back to the cabin. And I'm with you oh, guys about the she, windows. Maybe and stuff. she wasn't running a direct path to the cabin. Maybe she was trying to run around the woods trying to find her way back. No, it's not what that mm, looked like. It definitely looked like a beeline for the cabin. But well, I mean, she maybe she comes back all jacked up, right? Yeah. Like it's obvious something happened to her. And then nobody believes her. Yeah, nobody believes her. One and two, when they come back after the whole bridge thing, it's obvious something happened to that fucking bridge too, right? It's not just like in the water from falling apart it's it's uh, bent up it's yeah. bent up like a fucking like someone monster. took it and curled it over yeah. like so why don't you come back to that cabin and barricade the shit out of it something is going on regardless of whether you believe her or whatever somebody or something is trying to get to you so there's shutters 
There, I mean, do something. Don't just like leave everything open as they did. It just, I know that it's, you know, whatever, but. <laughs> that and whenever she's running back, why doesn't she just go back in the way she came out? Yeah, right. Yeah, she ran to the front door instead of running and back it was to locked. her. Like the as soon side as you door. see that it's rock, locked, why don't she just run around the back? You know it's right. Open. Yeah, agreed. I know. I was like, what is she? And then doing? all that pounding on the door and stuff she does, and like nobody rushes to the door. Like it takes them forever to like for Ash to get to that door. Yeah. I'm like, dude, she's literally beating the door down. Like nobody can hear that, and that, that cabin ain't that fucking big. No. It's just like Ash's girlfriend's like deep asleep when uh the other dude's girlfriend starts wigging out. Yeah. It's like she's nowhere to be found. Nothing's going, you know, all that screaming and everything's going on. She's nowhere to be found. There's definitely some plot holes in this movie. I'll tell That's you a lot. one part that really did crack me up because most of the time Scott is the asshole in this movie, right? Like yeah. 99% of the time he's just a dick. But there's the, the one part where it gets Shelly, right? And Shelly gets like, you know, possessed or infected or whatever the fuck it is because. It seems like an infection. It seems like a possession. You don't really know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she gets it. And then, like, Ash sees it happen. And he's standing, like, the closest to her. So he's, like, the obvious choice to, like, you know, grab her or do something. But he just looks at Scott like, that's your woman, man. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I ain't touched Ash, her. Ash, for the first part of this movie, does absolutely nothing. He literally just stands there and lets everything happen. I know. You oh, were yeah. talking him up big time. And I was like, is he going to do anything? No. No. He don't do nothing until the second one. Yeah. Like, the first one, he pretty much just gets his ass handed to him. Pretty much. But, like, Yeah. Like, yeah. I was just like, dude, he's just standing there, like, not doing anything. <laughs> and then the other part that cracked me up, too, is, like, when she, when he raises the axe at, uh, I think it was Shelly. He raises the axe at her, like, he's going to do something. And then she starts gnawing at her own hand, and he's like, ugh. And he just yeah. puts the axe back down. He's like, ugh, gross. <laughs> like, yeah, what's she's his like, axe going to do if she's over chewing like, on herself? Here, let, let me do it for you. That's what she was saying. was girlfriend that was gnawing on her own hand. Yeah, Shelly. Yeah. yeah, so it was Shelly. And like they kept going outside, like oh we got we got a barrier. No, you, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. Slide her in the the cellar or something. Like, yeah. Like her... throw her outside like, anyway. Like, yeah. Like... Don't don't go outside. Yeah. Like you don't have to go outside uh -huh. at all. There's no reason to do that. That was another thing that drove me nuts. And then, like the rules for infection or possession, whatever it is, yeah, don't seem to really like be like always the same. They've never been the same. Because They've always like, been... she gets raped or whatever, and that infects her. And then... Um, the one girl gets stabbed. The one girl gets ankle. stabbed with a pencil. Yeah, and that infects her. And that infects her. But yet, like, Ash is getting covered in blood mm -hmm. and spit and... He gets his leg fucking... Yeah, she bites into his leg like it's a fucking chicken leg. She, she just rips his fucking... Yeah, she's cat. scratching his shit out. He's That's fine. why I like the second one, because he does get possessed in the second one. Right, does. right. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, his whole... Just, he does. Yeah, oh, yeah he does. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it, The rules of possession slash infection or whatever don't really seem to be right. cohesive. There. They're not at all. <laughs> like, at all. And that's another thing, too. Like, in the second one, sunlight saves him. So I'm like, you know, with this one, I'm kind of like... Is where I'm like, what is sunlight like? Which kind of makes sense, though, because you talk about, you know, dead by dawn or whatever. They're, right, but then really... in Army of Darkness, like, the deadites are out during the day, too. Yeah, but so. that's, a, that's a whole uh, different... That's medieval deadites. Well, no, that's a <laughs> uh, different... It's not our timeline or our... Yeah, it was a... He got sucked. You know what I mean? Different. I don't know what... Talk, what universe? Call it. Yeah, different universe, different, Dimension. you know what I mean? Multiverse. So, like, it could be different rules or different. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Ash and Well, no, because that's not a different universe, because remember, the book was found where he had left it yeah. in that castle. He had Merlin. He found it, because the, the book was found in that castle in the second one. Uh, he talks so about maybe how it was he found just it. time travel? It's just yeah, time it's travel. Time that's all that is. Well, so, yeah, it's that not, doesn't make it's, sense. it's not, it's not, it's not Ash into the multiverse. It's, it's, it's Ash to the future. Ash the well, future. <laughs> my theory is that the whole reason that, you know, in this movie that he got splashed with all the blood and gore and stuff, but didn't get. Um, he had it washed off right away. No, he didn't get um, infected or whatever is because that was just Sam Raimi getting back at him for being a dick all these years. Because, you know, that's what everybody says about him. Yeah. But they've been friends all these years. 
So he's just like, you know what? I can do this and he can't do anything about it because we're making a movie. So I'm just going to do this to him and then say like, oh, it's part of the movie. Maybe that's why Bruce Campbell's a dick to him all these years. No, no, no. I'm saying like before that, though, like, you know, when they were kids and stuff. Oh, I don't know. I, I've heard Bruce Campbell. He like had that whole car dismant- dismantled mm-hmm. and like as a joke. And I guess Sam Raimi lost his shit about it. I sure he, he was like, what yeah. the fuck, man? Yeah. And he's like, he was really pissed. I bet. So I think he had it completely reassembled and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He loves that car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, do you guys get through all your notes and stuff? Mm-hmm. You guys good? Mm-hmm. You guys good? You good? Good, good, cool. Uh, let's, um, let's rate it. Let's rock out, bitch. Oh, man. You're weird. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Let's get into rating and reviewing, bruh. Um, let's start with um, Karen. I think we should start with Madison. Because wanna, she's never yeah, seen it that's before. True. I'd like to hear he her perspective. He likes to put me last every single time. No, we can get her first. Yeah, let's get her I'd first. like to hear your perspective because... Without our, our without, influence. Without our influence. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, you guys. I laughed my way through this whole movie. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, I don't care. Just not to, like, I don't want no, us don't to influence you at it. all. I'd like to hear Go your for straight. No. You guys, I laugh. Unfiltered recognition here. Okay, I laughed through this whole movie. I thought it was You're hol- supposed to. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, I, I think I laughed the most. I don't know. It was definitely on one of the demons. I can't remember which part, though. It was probably whenever she was screeching. Like a maniac and just wouldn't stop. It was annoying, but it was funny. I thought it was funny. You mean whenever she got stabbed by the dagger? Yeah. Yeah, that was annoying as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I was annoyed quite a bit by the screeching. Didn't and like it. Laughing. Didn't like it. Hmm. And then she was laughing. She was kind of laughing like that one girl from Waffle House. The Waffle House. <laughs> she was kind of laughing like that. And I thought that was funny, too, because I can laugh like that one girl from the Waffle House. There was, okay, there was this girl at the Waffle House. She was laughing so funny, and I mimicked it, and I did it perfect. You want to hear it? Yeah, she just wants an excuse to just you go ahead and hear do it. it. Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. I couldn't do it. I couldn't take it. <laughs> it salt I thought it was down. hilarious. It hurts my ears and my eyes for some reason. Your eyes? <laughs> like, uh, ah! Uh, His eyes start getting blurry yeah, from all like, the noise. Uh, Are my eyes bleeding? <laughs> But um, I did like this movie. I thought it was funny, and um, and that's really all I thought of it. I just thought it was really funny. It <sighs> it would be a bad trip, especially at the end, whenever like the stuff is melting away. If someone was on shrooms, dude, that'd be horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> Acid. Are you guys seeing that? No, what are you talking about, man? No, what are you Snow talking colors. about? They're just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You want me to rate it now? Yeah, that's the point. Yeah? Oh, sorry. I thought you wanted me to give me my review first. Give me, give you my review first. You did. Now give us the re- your rating. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll give it... I give it a six and a half. Okay. Yeah. Because <sighs> the humor was really the only thing that had gone for me. <laughs> 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 Didn't you say it wasn't even supposed to be funny? It was supposed to be honest. It wasn't serious. supposed to be funny. <laughs> but, you know, know, I think knowing Sam serious. Raimi, he's probably fine with everybody thinking Oh, yeah, funny. for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why he made the That's why he made the second one the way he did. Yeah. Uh, Eric. I'm just going to go out there and give my number right, aw- right away, and then I'll I'll explain why. Okay. So I'm going with a three and a half. Fuck you. Whoa. Eric. <laughs> get into it. But I was, I mean, I was, I would have been lower. I think I was adopted. I would have been lower. <laughs> I would have been I'm lower if sure I did Except for been, my mom. Like I said, I would have been lower if nothing good would have came out, out of this movie. If there was no Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness, you know, it, it came out and made some great content movies. 
Uh, I got to say, I liked the uh, practical effects. I enjoyed um, the camera angles that Sam Raimi does and that he's stuck with and it's actually proven to be good in the other movies. But I could not get past some of the continuity issues, some like, like I said, the shotgun shell thing, the uh, not being able to go through windows, but have to go through a door. I mean, there was a lot of things, the blood issue where, you know, it just, it threw me off and I just could not really get focused into the movie because it was just, <laughs> I was starting nitpicking. So, I mean, that's kind of where it goes for me. I just, I really did not enjoy the movie. I just enjoy what came after the movie. What came from it? So that's my take on it. Adopted. <laughs> Adopted. <laughs> Probably was. All right, uh, Karen. What do you think? Uh, so there's a there. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. You know, you can sit here and shit on the movie all day long. Oh, I will. <laughs> I know we don't. Um, but we already did that pretty much. So I don't really need to sit here and talk about all the bad things about the movie we already did so i'm just gonna say i think it is a love story to someone who truly really loved movies and wanted to make movies so he took what he could to make a movie with his friends and he did that and it ended up making him a star and his friends stars and his brother a star worked out well for them um and it became very iconic in its own right, even if it isn't a great movie on its own. So for that, I'm going with Madison and I'm going to say a 6.5 as well, because it may not be a good movie on its own, but you have to give it credit where credit is due, where what it's done for not just the series, but for the people who made it. And um, the things that came out of that movie, like the crawl, the, the iconic things that it did in general, uh, and where it took everyone and the series itself. I'm giving it a 6.5. As you should. Long live Karen. Woo! <laughs> okay. We got to get a sign that says um, LLK. LLK. <laughs> uh, I think for me, this movie, um, I agree. It started out, it started a huge, huge franchise that hasn't slowed down. It's still making great movies. I mean, granted, there's only five of them but that's a good thing you know it's it's been done over and they're time they're doing different flavors now they're not right. following the same pattern yeah it's not the formulas. same pattern like you know you started out in the woods then you had you went to some medieval shit then the remake took you back to the woods There's and the cabin and the remake was and they're bringing new people in they're yeah. not keeping it stale yeah and it, even the like, well even the remake was fucking great the you remake know what I mean? was amazing that's one of the best remakes i've ever seen well and i like what they did too they didn't use um Bruce Campbell or anyone to try to usher in this yeah. new era. They just they just brought him in. They just brought yeah. him in. And even Evil Evil Dead Rise was good. I mean, we all it we had, already reviewed that one. Yeah, that was it good. had its moments. But um, this one here, I, this is definitely the weakest entry of the whole franchise. Obviously, because it's just they didn't have a budget. They didn't have you know. There's some flaws with it. That's understandable. Learning um, how to tell a story. Yeah, they were all wet behind the ears, as they say for for this one. Um, so for me, I think, you know, I'm going to be fair with it. I love it. You know, the, the only reason why I love it so much is because of Bruce Campbell and the franchise and Sam Raimi. And I'll give it a, I'm going to give it a five and a half. Um, this is definitely the weakest entry of the whole series for me, but it only gets better from here. So, so that brings a 5.5. 5. That's not bad mm-hmm. for what we had here. Mm-hmm. I agree. All right. Who wants to audience or I mean. Uh, oh, 13. critics. 13. 13. Wow. 20, That's 19. lower than what you gave it. 20, so. 21, 21, 21, 21. I'm going to go 20. No, I'm going to go 35. Okay, Karen's going to take this. It's an 86%. Whoa, For the really? critics? For the critics. Bitch. You got to understand. Are this. they high? I mean, <laughs> These ones are. It says, are. so scrappy that it feels as illicit, illicit, illicit as a book found in the woods. The Evil Dead is a stomach-turning achievement in bad taste that remarks that marks a startling debut. They're just trying to kiss Sam for one kind Sam Raimi, hell for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get your audience scores. Thirteen. 
<laughs> okay, oh audience, God. I'm going to go 75. 67. I'll change, to, I'll change it to 35. 67, what would you say? 75. 35. It's Karen's going to take this. It's also it's an 84%. Yeah, I figured it was up there. People like the people love this movie. Come mm-hmm. on, man! It's a beloved classic. Absolutely, it's a, cla- it's a beloved. Yeah, classic. but some and like some of these I, some I, this of these is, things is, that you guys call classics have low scores. True. From it. This, but this is like beloved. Like this is like they're still making movies. Yeah. This is huge for people. Yeah. I still like was blown away watching this again. They're like, holy crap! This is not as bad as I remember it to be. Is it just me? Do I have to have like milk? I have to drink it straight away, or else it just don't taste right. Milk. It's better Ugh. cold than warm. Sure. Well, it's still cold because it's cold down here. It just doesn't taste right anymore because it's been out for so long. It's been out for an like hour and thirty-eight minutes. Yeah, I don't like milk. Or a little milk. Sam like Raimi's franchise, and this is a star and a half. Sam Raimi's franchise, f- frenzied and kinetic. Camera work is the only part of the supported classic that th- uh, I thought worth comment. Well, I mean, it's kind of got a point in a, in a sense on that. Yeah, it's very, uh, very much Sam the Raimi. Camera, the camera angles and stuff. That's really okay. Stuff. Check this out. This guy gave this a one star. He said the most overrated movie ever made, five out of ten. But you just gave it a one what? star. That should be two and a half stars. I. So what? Yeah. Two he plus gave, two is seven. Yeah. So he gave it, well, he gave it a one star and then he said five out of ten. I'm like, <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, Have a very special day. <laughs> yeah. Have a very special book. Uh, half star, one hour, 20 minutes of your life you won't get back. Worst acting I've ever seen and gore for the sake of it, even allowing. For the fact, special effects are so much better now. This is absolute well, like dross. You, like you said, I mean, horror classic. It was no, the first first ever movie they. Really I can't believe he's so saying. Acting's not going to be the well, and Hold I'm, on, I'm, listen. Even he said, even allowing for the special effects that are so much better now, this is absolute. What do you mean? Well, of course, this is 1981. <laughs> fuck what? And not to mention, I think they did amazing. Mm-hmm. With those special effects, with the money they had, no, that's yeah. that. I couldn't do that with the money they no. had. Well, nobody does research. Well, it's that, and they? like I said, I mean, it's their first movie like mm-hmm. they've really been acting in, so they're not going to be yeah. like top not actors right there. I mean, no, they just still did pretty good for being like first time actors. Though. I mean, my grade on it was basically just based off the movie, not what came after it, not you know who's in it or whatever. Right. It's just based off what I thought about the movie. Uh, here's a half star. Obviously I'm missing something. The awful lighting, cinematography, camera movement, the ridiculous dry ice, the silly gore. Is this a satire? Even for a laugh, I'm really sorry. I do not, satire. I do not see the appeal. Dude, Everything is stuff. so terribly done. There are no scares or laughs. I honestly uh, tried, but I say again, I don't get it. Uh, I don't know about you guys or if I got broken humor or something, but I thought this movie was hilarious. You're supposed to. It, well, not really, but yeah, I'm glad second. you found some kind of entertainment out of it. You know what I mean? Wait, like, wait till you see the second and third movie. Yeah, they're better. And way I did better. find, oh, I found Linda genuinely terrifying like this time around. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ugh. Uh, here's <laughs> she a star started and laughing like that, like, run. <laughs> here's a star run. and a half. This movie, uh, this movie is only NC-17 rated movie i've seen and this is the only nc-17 rated movie i've seen and i was was really disappointed this is the only one you've ever seen i really dislike the whole dead people that are a live plot which is weird because i usually like that kind of thing this he went a really he went really far around yeah. just to say zombie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, this movie wasn't horrid, horrid, but it was really darn bad. Okay, so for it's one, okay I have questions. Like, zombies. why yeah. is this your first NC seventeen movie? Well, then why did he have to say dead people that are yeah. alive? Just the whole dead people that are alive. You mean zombies? You could just use one some, word. Yeah, zombies. Plus, 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 yeah, it's all the same fucking thing. Okay, well, they're deadites. Deadite, yeah, deadite. Just say deadite. Deadite would work yeah. too. 
When yeah, does like the, the we have name a whole... Deadite come into the series? Uh, I think in... Two. The... Is two, it in two, I think two. Uh, well... I only remember it in Army of Darkness, but it could be in two. I do remember it in Army of Darkness. That's what I'm saying. The only one, I, the first time I remember... You might be right. I don't know. Army... It might not be in two, but, but I know it's in Army of Darkness. I could be wrong. Because they call them Deadites right off the bat. Mm-hmm. But so. I think that's the people there call them Deadites. And Bruce yeah. Campbell's And Bruce Campbell the... kind of picks it up. Too. Picks it up. Yeah. He might, I don't know. Holy shit, there's a lot to say there. He just gave him something to call him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to find one. Worst movie I've ever seen. Uh, All right, one star. This is the stupidest horror movie I've ever seen. I understand that it's an 80s movie, but the claymation demons were just too much. The ending wasn't scary. It just proved I lost time. I'll never forget. Never get back. I automatically write that People person off. People say that all the time. Yeah, I love time. I'll never get back. Claymation was good for its time. No, I automatically write off a person that say that writes off a movie just because of the time in which it was made. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. just for an eighties movie. I like, know it's an eighty movie, care. but oh, I watch I movies from any era, any whatever that it's made because a good movie is a good movie. It doesn't matter when it was made. I mean, how often do they use actually claymation back then? You know, people uh, say. Uh, People say all the time it's a uh, time that I'll never get back, but like whenever you like start a movie, that's you signing up to. You don't know what you're about to get, mm-hmm. so if you don't want to waste your time on it, then don't watch a movie. Yeah. If you don't want to take you, the you, risk you, of wasting your time, then don't watch. In it. my opinion, all movies are a waste of time. True. Movies can be but a waste of time a because of you're not getting thing anything out of it. You're not. You're getting not getting. Productive. You're not making money. You're not. You're not learning anything unless you're watching an ed- educational movie. They're literally there to They're waste They're just time. there to waste time, kill time, and entertain you. That's all it is. Just like yeah. a video game, even a book. Even books are the same way unless they are meant to be educational. Like Aside books. from that, movies, books, all these things, all anything that tells you a story, they're all a waste of time. But they're a fun waste of time. Mm-hmm. So Sometimes. If you think it's a waste of time, don't fucking do it. Go read a fucking encyclopedia or, <laughs> I, I don't know. Go study. You know? That's why something. I hate it when people are like, I don't watch go, that much TV. Yeah, all go like count the leaves TV. on your tree out back. I don't know. Do anything else. Yeah. But don't, I don't get on watch here. movies. Don't I don't bitch. watch TV. Don't say it's like something. that. What do you do for fun? Because mm-hmm. whatever you do for fun, I'm going to look at you and say, I don't do that. I'll snoot you. Like, yeah. Because... Whatever your form of entertainment That's is, That's a waste it's of my time. Yeah. yeah, it's a waste of time. But you know what? What is, is life but a waste of time? This is what we do every day. You waste time every day doing shit that you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. I paint Until little minis. That's a waste of time. But at the end of the day, I get to look at that mini and say, oh, that thing's cool. Are you going <laughs> to sell those? No. Oh. What's the point of doing them then? Because I like them. Because oh, it's a waste of time. <laughs> he likes wasting See, time. Like wasting he likes wasting time. time. I was trying to prove your point. I wasn't bashing on you for any. Anyway, time. moving on. Uh, <laughs> let's get into some trivia here with Karen. Sweet ass trivia with Karen. There's a lot. Is there really? Okay. I found a lot of things interesting. So the film's budget was actually an estimated three hundred fifty thousand. It didn't start there though. It just got there. Oh. Where was it? Three hundred fifty thousand. I thought you were gonna say three hundred fifty dollars. I was like, "That's how much they got for the whole for the movie for the whole budget." That was the whole budget. That I was where do, it ended. I could do a lot with three hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> and on the actors and how much the actors cost and all that. I guess it depends on how much your locations cost. He's got to pay for that. I guarantee you, them actors didn't but make shit. Three hundred fifty thousand <laughs> back then. That's. A- I, I don't know. I, mm. You would like think. You would think. In the yeah. early 80s. Yeah. The I mean, cabin used as right the film the set was also lodging for the 13 crew members with several people sleeping in the same room. Living conditions were terrible and the crew frequently argued. The cabin didn't have plumbing, so the, argu- the actors went days without showering and went ill frequently in the freezing weather. By the end of production, they were burning furniture to stay warm. Andy Granger, a friend of Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi, gave them this advice. Fellas, no matter what you do, keep the blood running down the screen. They included the scene in the finished film where the blood runs down the projector screen as a tribute to him. Bruce Campbell put up his family's property in northern Michigan as collateral so that Sam Raimi not only could finish the film, but could also blow it up to the 35mm film, which was required for theatrical release. 
That's why I said it didn't, it wasn't, didn't, you know, it didn't start at 350. So I don't know how much it took to make the film, but they had to get more money to redo it in 35 millimeter hmm. for the theatrical release. Um, so I don't know how much it actually cost for them to make the movie, but the end result was 350,000. Right. Okay. That's why I just stopped because you guys kept going like, okay, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Ramey was so grateful. I still don't agree. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ramey was so grateful for Campbell's financial contribution that he credited him, credited him as co-producer. Also, in order to complete it, Sam Ramey, Rob Taper, and Bruce Campbell did everything they could from taking out high interest bank loans, borrowing money from friends and family, and even making cold calls to businesses around their hometown state of Michigan. The cold calls worked in that they actually got catering, gasoline, and other necessities that the cast and crew needed. So that 350000 is also taking into consideration the interest bank loans. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the end of principal shooting in Tennessee, the crew put together a little time cap capsule package and buried it inside the fireplace of the cabin as a memento of the production to whomever found it. The crew's famous time capsule was dug up by Kentucky filmmaker Dane Sears, who is currently known for the Hopewell haunting of 2023, a movie. He showcases its remains in a YouTube video uploaded to his Quick Hill Films channel. The cabin has since been destroyed, and only the fireplace is still intact. Bruce Campbell said in that his... That sucks, man, because I bet that was like... That should have been like a national landmark, you know what I mean? You would think so. Is, is, that, is that up in Detroit, then? That cabin? I'll get there. Oh. Bruce Campbell said in his biography that it was later burned down. To this day, the exact circumstances are unknown. Sam Raimi claimed that he burned it down himself after filming because he believed that the cabin was haunted. However, according to other sources, it burned down years after the film was made because teenagers illegally went to the cabin and accidentally set it on fire while camping outside of it. Illegal teenagers, meaning Sam Raimi. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, no one will give out complete direction, com yeah, complete directions to the cabin's location as too many people have already vandalized the property. The original script. I can only imagine how much of a hassle that is for for landmarks. Like, just think of like the Amityville like. Oh well, yeah, house that's why they and, completely changed the way. You it know, works. yeah, and all that stuff. Like, like it's just what a pain in the ass, man. But you sign on for that when you buy a place like that. You're right. Yeah, but like. In this case, whoever owned it back then, like, yeah, you can film your little I movie here, you know. The, um, the castle here, like, they they share all kinds of stuff on Facebook because they know that people are interested in that mm -hmm. castle. So that's nice of them. That's good of them. They don't have to do that, but they do. yeah, but they don't get near the traffic that like no no no. You know I'm just I mean? I'm using that as an example. Yeah, you know the people that bought the um the Goonies house in Astoria, mm -hmm. the people that just recently bought it. So the people that bought it before them were real jerks. They you know they didn't want people on the property. They threw fits. You know they were they were real jerks about it. Yeah, because they were living in it, weren't they? Yeah, but my point is, you buy a property like that. I mean, it kind of goes yeah. with the territory. Mm -hmm. You know what you're getting into. So the people that just bought it, they're living in it. But they also, when they see people, they're not jerks about it. They wave. You think they got now's, that? You think they got that time. statue on their on their coffee table in the living room? <laughs> Probably. With, and the penis is glued upside I down. Would. I'd buy the. I'd buy that statue. Break it on purpose. Yeah, and, and yeah. put it there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be funny. <laughs> Uh, the original script called for all the characters to be smoking marijuana when they are first listening to the tape. The actors decided to try this for real, and the entire scene had to be later reshot due to their uncontrollable behavior. The film's first cut ran at around 117 minutes, which Bruce Campbell called an impressive achievement in light of the 65-minute length of the screenplay. It was then edited. They drag a lot of shit out in the movie, though. Yeah, they they, dra they drag some shit out. Well, it was almost it was two hours originally. That 117 minutes. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying, though. Yeah. They, but they even even still with what they've got, they drag some shit out. Yeah, I can't imagine a two-hour cut. Like him in the cellar, dude, takes so long. I'm I like, would love to see that two-hour cut just like... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I would but I, I wanted to know like what, like what it what <laughs> what all they had to cut out. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, the original version was conceived as a horror drama with the occasional joke to bring some levity, and would focus on the terror that made it to the final product, but also the tragedy of Ash slowly losing his friends and his guilt for not being able to save them. After watching the first cut, Ramey Campbell and Tapper agreed that the film was already grim enough and trimmed it to a straight horror film. 
After completing principal photography in the winter of 1970 and 1980, most of the actors left the production. However, there was still much of the film to be completed. Most of the second half of the film features Bruce Campbell and various stand-ins, or fake shimps, to replace the actors who left. At the end of a normal day of shooting, Bruce Campbell would return home in the back of a pickup truck because he was covered in fake blood from head to toe. The blood was a combination of caro syrup, non-dairy creamer, lots of red food coloring, and one drop of blue food coloring to darken it. At one point, Bruce Campbell's shirt that he wears in the film was so saturated with the fake blood that after drying it by the fire, the shirt became solidified and broke when he tried to put it on. (laughs) (laughs) The opening sequence of the evil moving over the pond was achieved by having Bruce Campbell and Sam push Sam Raimi in a dinghy whilst he filmed the shot. Actually, most of the demon point of views that glide across the ground were shot by mounting the camera to a 2 by 4 while Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell ran along either side. Other times, with scenes involving the unseen force in the woods watching the characters, Sam Raimi had to run through the woods with the makeshift rig, jumping over logs and stones. This often proved difficult due to the mist in the swamp. How did he do it in the swamp, though? Did they, like, put it on something and do it that way? It was a makeshift rig, so, like... Whatever he had it on his chest, I imagine. Was he walking through that water though? Well, you know those um, those like anti-spill a... cups for toddlers that no matter which way they move it, it's going to stay yeah. in a one position. I've seen those for cameras. I'm assuming that's the kind of rig he had. So wherever had he had it positioned, line. it the camera wouldn't move no matter what he did with his body. I'm saying like, was he in the water though? Oh, I don't know. Like, it was just, he in the water? Like, whenever that, at the very beginning, he was it was moving a, a no, top said, of the swamp. He was in a dinghy, oh. in like a little boat. Okay, yeah. And then a zip line. Or that I was like, maybe he just had it like on a big long thing, just like moving it across the. No, he was in a dinghy, and and Bruce Campbell was pulling him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, director Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell were friends in high school where they made the many Super 8 films together. They would often collaborate with Sam's brother, Ted Raimi. Campbell became the actor of the group as he was the one that the girls wanted to look at. <laughs> Campbell was played has played brief parts and cameos in most of Raimi's movies ever since. When there wasn't any filming, Bruce Campbell would actually help out with the crew in prepping shots and props around the set. In Germany, the movie's February 1984 release was hindered by public authorities for approximately eight years. Original 1982 cinema and video releases of the movie had been seized, making the movie a hit in the black market video circuit, with pirated copies abound. A heavily edited version was first made available in 1992. Several high-profile author enthusiasts, among them even author Stephen King, publicly criticized the German ban on the movie. In other German language markets, the movie was never restricted from distribution. The first legal uncut version of the movie entered the German market in 2001 on DVD. Damn, it took that long. German German and Europeans, they're like backwards from us. So they don't like um, gore and violence and things like that. Australia is the same way. Yeah. But like nudity and sex, totally fine. (laughs) Whereas here, don't show a nipple. Don't show a nipple. But you you can chop a baby's head off. Yep. School shootings, all that stuff. It's fine. We can show that. (laughs) Uh. This version was seized by German authorities less than a year later, though. It was not until July 2016 that the uncut version of the movie was finally redeemed and made legally available in Germany again. Sam Raimi originally wanted to title this film Book of the Dead, but producer Irvin Shapiro changed the title to Evil Dead for fear that kids would be turned off seeing a movie with a literary reference. One reason Sam Raimi moved production to Tennessee was to avoid the harsh winter shooting conditions in the home state of Michigan. In an ironic twist, the winter of 1979-1980 ended up being one of the mildest in Michigan and one of the most brutally cold in Tennessee. The temperatures were so cold at the time during shooting that the camera and other wiring froze. They then had to be thawed by the fireplace inside the cabin. At the premiere screening screening of The Evil Dead, blood donor stations were giving free tickets to the movie along with pin badges stating, I bled for The Evil Dead to blood donors. Robert Tapper joked in an interview that it was their way of giving blood back to the community after so much fake blood was used during the filming. Several actors had inadvertently been stabbed or thrown into objects during production. A cameraman also slipped during filming, smashing his camera into Bruce Campbell's face and knocking out several of the actor's teeth. Joe Cohen was an assistant editor on the film. 
this was one of his earliest professional jobs, he and his brother Ethan Cohen would produce and make the film Blood Simple, 1984, three years after the release of this film. In preparing to get funding for that film, the Coens enlisted the help of friends Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi to help out, and they happily did so. Campbell and Raimi also started in a short film based on scenes of Blood Simple for the Coens to show to potential, potential investors, which proved successful. The film was shown to Stephen King, and it was his glowing endorsement, which was later used on the film's ads and posters of the film, which really sold it to the public. The film was later bought by New Line Cinema soon after. The cabin did not actually have a cellar. Most of the cellar scenes were filmed in the stone cellar of a farmhouse owned by producer Robert Taper, Taper's family in Marshall, Michigan. The last room of the cellar was actually Sam Raimi's garage. The hanging gourds and bones are a tribute to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For the scene where the students descend into the cellar, a hole was cut in the floor and a shallow pit was dug with a ladder placed into the pit. Bruce Campbell twisted his ankle on a root while running down a steep hill and Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert decided to tease him by poking his injury with sticks, thus ca causing Campbell to have an obvious limp in some scenes. Nice friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the white li liquid that often emits from the possessed after they're injured or maimed. Anyone want to guess what it is? Milk. No. It's 2% milk that Sam Raimi chose to use, not just to show how the possessed aren't normal beings, but also to mix it up so the MPAA wouldn't give the film an X rating. Ultimately, the film was released unra unrated. The film was initially released in the United States by New Line Cinema with an X rating, revised to NC-17 in 1994. What's an X rating? Uh, Usually, that's like pornos. Yeah. Oh. It's like nobody wants their kids seeing it. Yeah, pretty the much. Movie. They won't show it in theaters and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it uh, says X, like you're, you're like, it, it really turns people away from it. Like people, a lot of people will turn away from it. Yeah. Home video copies produced by Anchor Bay Entertainment are uncut and unrated because the licensing studio Renaissance Pictures was not contractually obligated to provide an MPAA rating. Because of the low budget, budget, contact lenses as thick as glass had to be applied to the actors to achieve the demonic eyes effect. The lenses took 10 minutes to apply and could only be left on for about 15 minutes because the eyes could not breathe with them all applied. Bruce Campbell later commented that to get the effect of wearing these lenses, they had to put Tupperware over their eyes. During the scenes where Linda is possessed, the makeup artist originally... This is what I was talking about. The makeup artist originally wanted to make her a snake-like cre creature, as can be seen when Ash is dragging her outside, filmed before the scene indoors while her, with her singing the creepy song. Her makeup was dark and a little more greenish, but eventually they changed the makeup to an evil doll face. Yeah, the greenish color. I don't think I could do that. That's dumb. Yeah. Well, it's still you can still see remnants mm -hmm. where they were like, yeah, this isn't working and changed it up a little bit. Right. So that's why they it was a little different. Inspired by William Castle, Sam Raimi had ambulances on standby as a publicity stunt at the film's premiere. <laughs> I thought that was neat. Yeah. The film was intended to be filmed in Michigan in a cabin. However, Sam Raimi and company could not find one. They tried the Michigan Tourism Guide, which was no help. So they came up with the idea of going to Tennessee to shoot. While there, while they could not find a cabin with the closest, and the closest they had come was one filled with squatters. At the very last minute, Raimi and the crew found the cabin they used in the film, which was not far from the house the cast and crew had moved into for the arduous shoot. The cabin had to be renovated from top to bottom as it was in deplorable condition. Rooms were filled with four inches of horse manure, <laughs> and electricity had to be put in along with a working telephone to make it hospitable. <laughs> the eerie howling wind audio heard in the background of much of the film wasn't stock sound effects. Raimi recorded the audio himself while staying in a hotel during filming. One evening, Raimi awoke to hear the wind howling through the mountains, creating a haunting sound. Raimi quickly got his sound equipment and recorded several minutes of it. Sam Raimi said that the audio was so effectively creepy that he's recognized it in several other films since the Evil Dead re Dead's release. Lucy Lawless saw the film upon its release. She was appalled, particularly by the inf infamous vine rape scene, <laughs> and wondered what kind of horrible people would make such a film. Ironically, she would later marry the film's producer, Rob Tappert, mm -hmm. who had actually insisted on making the scene more sexually violent and work in productions directed or produced by Sam Raimi. A small cameo in Spider-Man, in Spider Xena, Warrior Princess, and Ruby in Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Yep. <laughs> All that, produced by Sam Raimi, or directed. That, that's, that's what it's yeah. saying. Is like That's kind of ironic. 
In the comic series Marvel Zombies, it is revealed that Ash somehow ends up in a parallel universe and ends up being the cause of that universe becoming zombified. <laughs> of course. It- he really is the cause in everything. He's a bumbling idiot. He is. I mean, he really is. He's I mean, the cause. Like, he's the one who played the tape in this one. Mm-hmm. He plays the tape in the second one. He No, Scott. Scott played the oh, tape Oh, that's in right. This Scott one. did. And then in the second one, he did. And then in Army of Darkness, he releases them because of the book. He mis- mispronounced Nickel. the book. And <laughs> Nickel. Necktie. Necktie. <laughs> Sorry. I said them. <laughs> I basically said them. I, I didn't say every him. single syllable, but I basically said them. Yeah. <laughs> Despite its controversy and many technical goofs, this is considered to be one of the greatest horror films of all time. Many fam- many fans claim it's due to its amount of gore and execution of terror, while critics claim it is due to the constant reliance on visual storytelling and gripping performances. That's fair. The affordable single barrel shotgun was purchased by Bruce Campbell at a Kmart for its specific use in the film. You think that's why they went with S Mart? Because he took he bought yeah. he bought it from a Kmart. S Mart. Shop smart. S-mart. Shop S-mart. Since the budget was extremely low and where they were filming was secluded in the woods, live ammunition was used for a couple of scenes. Scenes such as when Ash shoots the window and also a dummy filled with blood was shot. Most of these scenes are filmed at low angles so the camera would not be hit. For other scenes, Bruce Campbell simply mimes firing the shotgun. At the end of production, Bruce Campbell and Robert T- Tepper brought, bought about 100 shells and shot up every prop used in the cabin. <laughs> the resulting rubble was then lit into a huge barn fire by Sam Raimi. The shotgun used by Ash is a Winchester Model 37A single barrel. <laughs> it is apparently a 20 gauge, as the shells used in the movie are yellow. In spite of Ash's remark in Army of Darkness that this gun is a 12 gauge double barreled Remington, this type of shotgun has never been used in the series. The one in Evil Dead 2 is a 12 gauge double barreled Stevens, and the one. And the one in Army of Darkness, a Stager, Stoger, Stoger, Stoger coach. Whatever the hell that is. Ash flirtatiously peeks at Linda while pretending to be asleep, shutting his eyes when she looks back at him. Ironically, after she's she's possessed and apparently killed, her corpse does the same thing to him. Because of the later sequels and the TV series Ash vs. Evil Dead, with their use of wacky Three Stooges-esque comedy to balance out the horror... Many newcomers to the series might be shocked to discover that the first film's tone to be a very straight-laced horror film with very little comedy, if any at all. In fact, many de- many fans who criticized the remake Evil Dead for its serious tone and lack of humor were reminded by other fans that the original movie was actually not that different. Yep. On the opening night of the film... After- I'm almost glad that they kind of went back to that serious... I agree. Horror. I'm sure that that's what Sam Raimi was going. For. Yeah, like I understand, like Evil Dead Two and Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Those are those are good, fun mm-hmm. horror comedy movies. But like, whenever Evil Dead came out, and I was like, and it went back to its original like horror roots, I was like, dude. Mm-hmm. And then like Evil Dead right. Rise, the same thing. Like, went back to its horror movie roots. I'm like, I like like it's it's what mm-hmm. it is to me. It's they it, both like, I have love their it. place. Yeah, series. they both, and I love both of them for the reasons that they exist. You know, mm-hmm. like I love the the horror comedy stuff, and I love the horror because it's horror. You know, <laughs> you can you can make the argument for both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the opening night of the film at the Rivoli Theater, the audience yelled at the screen during many of the typically stupid decisions of the horror movie characters. Robert Shea, whose Noon Line Cinema was distribu- distributing the film, I, don't, I can't stand Bob Shea. I just can't stand that guy. <laughs> told Sam Raimi they would have to make cuts to those scenes. However, when they passed by the Rialto Theater on 42nd Street later that night, they saw sold-out shows for the entire night and heard people praising the film. Shea quickly changed his mind. Of course he did. Of course. It was the shortest change of an editing plan. Didn't he do some of the same shit with uh, Wes Craven? Yeah. No, he... When it came to the Friday movies, he was just obnoxious. Wasn't he, like, really controlling and shit? Yeah, and like I want it this way, I want it that way, and well, the funniest thing is what happened in part two. Like he said that he had to have a role in it. Oh yeah, and, like, and he yeah, was the bartender, the gay bartender, and he, or whatever. He didn't even know. He didn't get the joke until somebody pointed it out to him like twenty years later, and they're like you, you, you know, you were a gay bartender, right? And he's like, <laughs> what? What? No, I wasn't, like, dude. <laughs> you were wearing all leather and serving drinks to men in a gay Only bar. Men in, in a, a gay, gay bar. bar, yeah. Bob, 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 Bob. <laughs> his sister's so much cooler. 
<laughs> At the premiere of the film, one of the investors came up to Sam Raimi and said, I'm very upset. I thought you boys said you're making a horror picture, not a comedy. In the original script, before reaching the cabin, the group were to stop at a gas station where Ash would talk to the owner of the station and retrieve the keys for the cabin. It was also supposed to have an old man playing a banjo, warning the group that some evil force stalks the The harbinger. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of would have been fun to see that. Originally, the force just attacked Cheryl, but after seeing the news, producer Robert Tapper insisted the scene should go farther, so they added the penetration shot. The censor board had their biggest issue. The reason I say that, the, the censor board... Can you guess what they had their biggest issue with? It wasn't the the rape scene. I'll give you that. No. Mm -hmm. The censor board had their biggest issue with the stick coming out of Scotty's abdomen as well as his broken wrist. Hmm. Why? But not the fact that there was a stick inside this woman's vagina. Correct. Like, and they showed it too, like right up her skirt. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't in the right position, big. but still, like it was. Hey, you know where you know, it was going. You knew what was going, and then on. she was even moaning. Yeah. Like it I was. Told you it sounded like she was trying to enjoy it there for a second. Was she was like, like "Ah, oh, I'm here." You know what I mean? I mean like, well, like she wasn't tensed up at all at that point. The magnifying glass necklace was originally intended to be a plot point by focusing the sunlight to burn the Book of the Dead, but it was decided after shooting began that this wasn't going to work, so its actual use in the film was a desperate attempt to keep it relevant since so much of the film time had been spent on it already, and that's why the dagger went to the wayside. Still. I'm just... It should have been used. Ash was intended to die at the end when the surviving demon attacks him. Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell both stated that they made this film to be recognized by studios and to help them get a career in film, not to start a whole franchise. They sold the distribution rights of the film to New Line Cinema for an incredibly low price because they felt there was no need for a sequel. This was later changed when they returned to make Evil Dead 2, which they claimed was possible because they had neglected to sell the rights to the storyline and the characters. It did, however, prevent them from reusing footage from the first film in the sequel's prologue, so they had to refilm several scenes for that purpose. And this is the last one, and I think it's the best one. For many years, Bruce Campbell stated that the final shot in this film where Ash is attacked by a surviving demonic presence was achieved by mounting a camera on a motorcycle and having director Sam Raimi drive it through the forest and the cabin directly into Campbell. He also claimed to have some broken ribs because of this, which was the reason why they shot this film last. They were expecting him to be injured. Oh! Even though Campbell has repeated this story in his autobiography and during the premiere of Ash vs. Evil Dead, he admitted in 2022 that this was all a big joke, to add to the myth and see how many people would believe the story, which many did. In reality, Raimi... Like yeah, he's an asshole like that. In reality, Raimi ran through the forest and cabin while sporting a camera with a wide-angle lens mounted on his head, while the the crew pulled the doors open with ropes as he sprinted through them. Campbell's final shot was the one where he is doused in gore in the basement. I mean, I, I could imagine being speared by Sam Raimi. That'd be kind of funny to watch. That'd be funny. Yeah, just I just think have it, a I, secondary camera just to watch that happen. <laughs> I just think it's funny like to imagine him telling this story knowing damn well it's bullshit and Sam Raimi not saying a word like, yeah, I hit him with my I hit him with, hit the with a bike. Yeah, I hit him with my motorcycle. I hit him. Yeah. What of it? <laughs> I did a wheelie right he on his chest. I knew there'd, bro- I knew there'd probably see- be a lot of like a <laughs> lot of carefully, you can still see the, the tire marks on his rib cage. <laughs> oh boy! Oh my god! I can see it. You guys see that, right? <laughs> <sighs> what are we doing next week, Karen? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings isn't even in there. That's not what I said. I said the Hobbit. Well, we don't want to do any more Tremors movies. No. <laughs> no, we're not doing any more Tremors movies. So it wants to be done, I guess. The Rock. The what? Oh, is that the one with Nicolas Cage? Okay. I haven't yep, seen that in a hundred years. I know. Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. That's like an, an action, action movie. movie. It is streaming on Fubo. Fubo. That's a free service, ain't it? Yeah. I think so. You can run it I on it, the other I ones. I don't own that one. No, I don't own that one. The Rock is one of vengeful General Francis X. Hummel seizes control of Al- Alcatraz Island 
and threatens to launch missiles loaded with deadly chemical weapons into San Francisco. Only a young yeah. FBI chemical weapons expert and notorious federal prisoner have the stills to penetrate and the impeg- impenetrable, uh, pregnable, impregnable, yeah, island fortress and take him down. It's a good movie. It's a Michael Bay movie. Yep. Explodes. <laughs> Yeah, shit, shit, blow, shit blows up. <laughs> Shit's going to blow up. It's a good movie, though. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the movie. What's it on? It's just Fubo? Yeah. Fubo and rent. You can rent it on anything else, really, but it's streaming on Fubo. <sighs> uh, and if you want, you can buy it off of Amazon on Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, which I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. Bye now. You like that one button. Done. Yep. One and done, baby. Dealt with. It'll be here the third. What is today? The twenty uh, eighth. So uh, it'll be here in five days. days. Oh, and that'll be like Saturday, Sunday, uh, Sunday. So the day before, I actually need to watch it. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll come on time. The, like during the, the like from like Thanksgiving to Christmas, good luck on getting your packages on time because they get so jam packed with like Joe back Dante. orders. And I'm done. Joe Christmas. Dante's birthday. Well, we ordered everything on Black Friday and this and that to like to get those deals, but like fuck it, it's got a month to get here. It has to be here by Christmas. So yeah. Anyway, next week we will be doing The Rock with uh, your your boy Nicholas Cage. Did we already do a it's creator boy, profile Nicholas on him? Cage. I think we did. I think we did too. We do one on Sean Connery. I don't Connery. think we did. If we, we if we haven't done Nicholas Cage, then maybe we'll do Sean Connery or Michael Bay. Honestly, well, yeah. Michael Bay or that's about it. Really, in there. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. We'll see. We'll mom's see. Crush. I love. I mean, what well, we did. Connery was everybody's mom's crush. Yeah, right. <laughs> I heard he was an asshole in real life, though. Like he was like almost like borderline abusive to his did, wife. I was gonna say, didn't he? Th- didn't he say something about hitting women was yeah, okay or something? yeah, hitting women was okay or some shit. Like women needed a light slap. Every yeah, every, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> women needed a light slap. Or was some shit. Something like that. like that. Yeah, I almost bought Highlander today. That was on. 4K Blu-ray at Walmart. I'm like, mm. yeah, I didn't though. <laughs> I'm not a big I'm not, fan of I'm not a big Highlander fan, so I was like, yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> First yeah. one's probably the only one I really watched. That's the one that I was, they had, the one with Sean, I don't him think and I've Sean seen Connery. Any of them all the way through. I have, but it's been so long. Sorry, but anyway, uh, next week um, we're gonna do The Rock, so check it out, watch it. Um, if you haven't already seen it, that's one of the movies that a lot of people have already seen. Yeah, I know I've seen it, but it has been a very I've long time. I've seen it time. a lot. I've probably seen that movie at least 10 or 15 times. Oh, no. I think I've probably only maybe seen it twice. Maybe. Oh, yeah. No, I used to watch maybe. the fuck out of it when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. This That and Con Air, that's like... Oh, Con Air, I've seen that at the That's like classic yeah. John, the like, back like the Nicolas box. Cage to me. That's classic yeah. The Rock, Cage. Con Air, and Face Off so, are like typical... Mine yeah. would be yep. Con movies. Air, Face Off, Raising Arizona... We need to do Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona is like a deep cut, though. That's like something that like a lot of people don't know about. They it's just should, older. Though. That is an amazing movie. His they they call his like what do they call that? Whenever they've got that movie, that three movie trope. No, that three movie Trifecta? like that. Yeah, they're like triple. Like whenever they're three best, it's their three best movies. It's like they're. You know what I mean? Trifecta, I guess. Yeah, Trifecta, whatever. Right. They they have a name for it, but like that's that's Johnny C- or Johnny. I keep wanting to say Johnny Cage. <laughs> Nicholas Cage's <laughs> is The Rock, Face Off, and Con Air. Everybody's like, those are the three movies that people love from yeah, him the most. Known for. Yeah, that's because they're just fucking jam packed, no nonsense, just action movies. It's just it's goofy and you love it. I'll watch The so, Rock again before I make that determination, but I love Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona is like my number one Nick Cage movie. Love yeah. it. We'll see. Anyway, uh, till next week, don't forget to check out all our social stuff down there. And, um, somewhere. somewhere. No, down. they're all right there. It's right here. Can't you right see it? Here. Or is it right there? No. It's... They were on your forehead last week. Were they? <laughs> oh.
Okay. <laughs> I told you. He warned you. I it warned you. Was there enough room or like did you have to use yours? No, there's plenty of room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week whenever we do The Rock. <laughs> Bye. 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 We'll